All right, we are on part two of the newest episode of Suwama Station, the official podcast of All Japan Worldwide Fan Group for May. Now, as we mentioned in part one, we had so much to put into the episode that we felt that a two-parter might have been the best way to go, splitting it up from just about four hours to two hours an episode. Now, in our last episode, we went over the results of what was going on in the beginning part of May, as well as the lead-up to Champions Night on May 16th. And we also had a talk with our pal Isaac about Colega Pro Wrestling. This half of the episode will discuss what has happened in the second half of May. Things complicated due to the uh, lockdown in the different prefectures in Japan, how that has affected all Japan's plans. We also have our interview with Fumi Saito that we're actually going to start off with and then we are going to bring you the rest of the news updates and results from the later part of May. So let's get over to that interview. Hey folks, how's it going? It is Dave the Drummer here, your fantastic host for All Japan Worldwide Fan Group. want to thank you folks for subscribing and listening in to the podcast and you know we we do our best to interview folks that uh, have some awesome details or some they're a part of all japan pro wrestling or have been a part of all japan pro wrestling and my guest today is somebody we had the chance to interview with a couple of months back and we have fantastic time just you know cutting it up and learning so much about all japan from this person he is a very respected japanese journalist he uh definitely has the knowledge if you are curious about anything all japan wise or just japanese pro wrestling my guest today is the wonderful and talented fumi saito fumi hello from tokyo thank you, you for joining us we're so happy that you could come on the show again i was uh, looking forward to it I, I'm, I'm doing pretty good uh, i just got some teeth pulled a couple of days ago but i'm, I'm slowly oh, recovering yeah. Wisdom teeth? No, th those are coming soon enough. But no, these are just <laughs> okay. some bad chompers. But uh, you know, you got to take care of business. Got to take care of yourself. And yeah, you uh, gotta be careful going dentist. You know, with COVID situation. Oh yeah, Dude. no, our our our, uh, our dentist in uh, in Santa Cruz, they are top notch. They do a very good job of taking care of themselves, That's taking nice. care of the people. Um, we're we're in one of the counties. In, in California that has just done a fantastic job keeping the COVID rate uh, at a... Uh, I'm not, oh, I don't, the vaccination I don't know. is good in California too, yes. Yes, yes, most definitely. Yeah. I, I just got my first shot not too long ago, but I'm a, a okay. substitute teacher. Well, so. some of the friends from my... You know, some of my friends from states had uh, second shots already. Yes. You know? Yeah, a fair yeah. amount of people I know, they're uh, already... They're, they're just waiting for their second shot, myself included. And uh, oh. you know, th things are things are beginning to move. So I'm I'm really hoping. Oh, I'm I'm, I'm just hoping because um, it's hard to say, but and I haven't had my first vaccine yet. This quarantine and the COVID situation, and the, you order more things from Amazon than ever. So yes, it's very true. Isn't it though? Because even even the well, I go grocery shopping, you know, or the grocery grocery store nearby. Or the Seven Eleven nearby. This is just about the only time I get out of my house every day, you know. Right. And uh, everything is pretty much online, you know. Thing, the Zoom meeting to uh, my, you know, my college courses that I teach. Uh, it's online, and uh, all the meetings are pretty much online. And uh, I guess people spend more time in front of your smartphone and the tablet and and and. The, in the laptop longer than ever you know <laughs> yeah I, I would definitely say these days uh, I, I, people are, are more uh, fixated on the, the, the like I said smartphone social media things of that nature streaming services you know yeah yeah oh it's gonna take over television eventually so oh yeah no it's it's coming I could totally see it in the future yeah 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 but the, it, when the, all these things will move into live streaming thing you know we will we'll be watching more commercial in there too though 
Oh, I, I guarantee it. I guarantee it. You, you know, know what I'm saying? It's just yeah. like television was. What we're actually going to talk about today, I've had uh, Fumi come on to talk with us about, there's a lot of folks that, you know, the Muto, right? Muto just won the GHC yeah, heavyweight yeah, title. Yeah. And, and maybe some folks out there who are listening, they don't understand that Muto, uh, he came in and basically was the a savior for all Japan in 2002 right yeah and so yeah. um that's what we're going to talk about today is the muto era 2000 right he's wrestling in wcw wc the whole year yeah right and, and so, so dying dying day of you know wcw nitro we, we might add and so he witnessed it. yeah he witnessed the whole backstage of it and uh, he see he he was going to spend the whole year and he even you know his his wife and daughter came in he had an apartment in atlanta and uh, he was planning on staying a little long you know but when he witnessed what was happening in Nitro backstage with Vince Russo era, you know, and uh, it's like, wow, this company is going down. You know, he just knew then. And, and yeah. so uh, I, I'd imagine that at some point he, he's weighing his options and he's beginning to see that, you know, maybe, you know, not being in America is going to be as prosperous as he thought. And, and he's looking at, you know, New Japan and the influence of uh, MMA right is beginning to slowly sweep into new japan stronger than it ever had before with the rise of pride yeah, it was in the era though it was a uh, you know end of 90s into millennium um you know things like a pride and k1 and you know keep on by it uh, you know every year uh new year's eve you know for about five to seven year period they had the network in special uh you know on New Year's Eve, a like three to five hour program, they're airing all MMA using professional wrestlers. Yes. You know, MMA did the right, you know, beginning of this. You Even in UFC, you know, UFC became big hit because you had sh people like Shamrock and Dan Southern. They came from pro wrestling, you know? Oh, yeah. No, that's yeah. absolutely true. Yeah, because over here, there was a Nobuhiko Takada or people like Kendo Kashin or Yuji Nagata, the, the legitimate background wrestlers in Japan, they were brought in to this event, MMA. Hicks and Gracie against Nobuhiko Takada at the Tokyo Dome. Wow, big fight, right? right. But what they were missing then is like, you have to go back to pro wrestling after that. You know, and then uh, people, it's like UWFI was the was a 90s, late 90s answer to professional wrestling. If you you know if you want to make professional wrestling a, a legitimate sport, it's gonna look like this. And there was the UWF. It was like a myth, big myth, right? Right. People like Fujiwara, Akira Maeda, Nobuhiko Takada, Minoru Suzuki, Masakatsu Funaki, all these guys you know were together. They were all together in the original UWF, and we all believed the wrestling, whole wrestling community in Japan, or the, or the vast majority of wrestling fans in Japan really believed they were going to change professional wrestling, you know? And, uh, I mean, into like a legitimate contest, you know? Right. Because every kid's dream, you know, when you, how old were you when you became a professional wrestling fan? Uh, I mean, as far back as I can remember, honestly, but, but, but it's like, <laughs> yeah, like, right. but it's like WWF, NWA, AWA, yeah. you know? So, yeah. I mean, you know, you, you knew that there was a line, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, every kid's, you know, dream was like, you know, first, as a little kid, you believed everything you watched, you know, and then you got in, then you became such a fan. Yes. Then, after a while, you know, the non-wrestling fans, like your your neighborhood or your homeroom teacher or your, I don't know, gym gym instructor or right. some, your, your anybody, your cousin, anybody. Yes. Not even a wrestling fan. They'll come and tell you, wrestling is fake. Yeah, right. right. And then it's like... Then you are young enough that uh, much uh, immature enough that this, you're so young that you can't really fight back, you know. Yes. <laughs> you know, but uh, you know the fact that you love wrestling, but uh, you have to come up with logic, you know. So you kind of wish this was all real, you know. Right. It may not be real, but I love it, kind of thing, right? Yes, absolutely. Because you have your favorite wrestlers, favorite stars, and there's a wrestling show that you watch every week religiously, and something you feel is so important, right? Yes. But uh, there's always, even even in Japan, there's a certain stigma to it, you know, that the stereotypical understanding of, you know, like adult out there. It's like, okay, wrestling's fine, but it's all fake. You know that, right? It's like, but uh, 
you were so young, you couldn't really come up with the right logic, you know, because these people, you know, you get a little older, you realize that, that they, but these people don't even watch wrestling. Why do they think they know something that I don't know? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but the, those are the same struggle that the, we, you know, wrestling fans, you and I, America, Japan, Europe, anywhere, Mexico. Right. Uh, I think we all share the same experience as a kid like that. Right. Yeah. And then and, UWF is going to change all that because it's legit. Uh, yeah, it was still work, you know, but uh, it was it came from wrestlers, you know, right. that uh, people like Fujiwara, Akira Maeda, Takada. It was Yamazaki. It, Yamazaki, too. Yeah. I love oh, Yamazaki. So, so talented. Yes. Yeah. They were like um, they don't want to they were saying like they want they don't want to go to bars and, you know, some guy come come right, you know, sit right next to you and saying, Wrestling is fake, ain't it? And what Antonio Inoki traditionally was saying was that uh, his answer was that, well, I, I don't know about other people's wrestling, but my wrestling is real. That yeah. was usually Inoki's answer. Right. But it takes care of Inoki's issue right there because nobody's going to ask any more questions, you know? Yeah. But uh, so wrestlers, young wrestlers had this, you know, similar, you know, like stigma, trauma almost, <laughs> that uh, you will be asked. You're a wrestler. Oh, great. It's all fake, ain't it? Like, <laughs> what kind, yeah, what kind of conversation is that? It's like, I don't even know you, right? Right. <laughs> or at, at restaurant, at bars, or the airport, or hotel lobby, you know, this similar question would be asked, you know? So the, there was always a theme that the wrestlers would say, no, what I'm doing is real. And then they might, might break your finger or something, you know, like an old-fashioned car guard style, you know? But... Uh, it came from wrestlers' side, you know, with the UWF that uh, openly started talking about, we are not going to bounce off the ropes. Right. That's making it look stupid, right? Right. We're not going to fight outside the ring. We're not going to use chair shots. We're not going to do this and we're not going to do that. And uh, the, the, we have rules and we do like a professional sport. And our wrestling match will look real, you know, because what we're doing is real. Then this was such 80s thing. It was... The, part of the reason was that Inoki, Antonio Inoki, your hero, was getting older, right? right. And but he never steps down because it's a professional wrestling, you know. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Same. Same problem that the aged Hulk Hogan, aged Ric Flair, or or Harley Race, or somebody like that, for that matter, that the, they will hang on to your main event position, you know. And uh, they rarely put younger guys in over, and. Uh, then again, you have to sell tickets. Inoki does sell tickets, right? You know, yeah, and uh, yeah, that kind of thing. But the uh, UWF was so big, like almost like a big cause, big movement within the wrestling community that these guys gonna make wrestling real. Right. But beyond their UWF's control, something called MMA was born outside of UWF. You know, it came from America, you know, Gracies, UFCs. You know, right. And uh, but the uh, very beginning stage of UFC, a lot of the professional wrestlers went in there, you know? Yeah, because a lot of times UFC will pay you a lot bigger paycheck in one match than a normal wrestling match or something, you know? Yeah. Muto, he, he's really beginning to see the influence how much MMA is getting into New Japan. To... And also Inoki's influence too. Yes, because he was going towards more and more mixed martial arts, mixed martial arts. That's what he. That, that's what made him famous. If you remember, and you were going going back all the way to 1976, Muhammad Ali against Antonio Inoki. Right. That's a huge. That's a huge uh, event in, yeah. in pro wrestling. Japanese, American. It, it's just. It's a huge thing, right? Yeah, it was huge, real huge. Because and also it was a. Uh, that uh, turning point of technology too. That there was no such thing as pay per view then. It was like a closed circuit movie, right? Closed circuit, yeah, exactly. Yeah, closed circuit, and 150 locations in America. You know, a, a movie theater, regular arena, or after the wrestling show. For instance, like in the Olympic Auditorium, they had wrestling show. Then they had the you know that the live streaming, not a streaming. Then it was like a uh, satellite. Like a Satellite, right. yeah, yeah, and uh, not even the pay-per-view, but it's the satellite uh, closed circuit in New York City, then Shea Stadium. They had Stan Hansen against Bru you know Bruno San Martino, Andre the Giant against Chuck Weppner. Then 
you set the big screen on the you know on the pitcher's mound and right in the middle of baseball field, big screen and showing Ali against Inoki from Japan live. Right. You know? Yeah, that was a big thing, technology wise too. Yeah. yeah. And so at that at the in the the two thousands uh, in two thousand we're, we're really seeing the influence is is there it's coming and, in yeah yeah and, and Muto then, uh, Muto's even using the the cross arm breaker as a finisher right I think uh, in ninety nine yeah, yeah but the, he never leaned you know leaned you know he never really was into this MMA you know like the direction yeah. When he was young lion with New Japan, you know, Muto was like back in eighty five, eighty six. Right. He was like, <laughs> like a straightforward enough to tell, you know, Takada and Akira Maeda. It's like nobody's digging your shit. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> no, and it's like, like what you're doing in the ring is boring. Right. Is what he was saying. You know. Yeah. Cross arm bar, un- uneducated audience. It looks kind of boring, right? Right. Right. It's, all these Kimura, the MMA moves, the, the sub, arm submission, leg submission, Achilles tendons, all the like a real hard stiff kicks. Right. The audience need to be educated to the style. Then you enjoy it. Right. And that's why yeah. like an MMA audience could dig shoot style stuff or vice versa. But if you're a pro wrestling fan, it's like going from zero to 100 trying to watch an MMA match because you're not really going to see much semblance of pro wrestling no, no drop Brian. kicks yeah. not even a, not even a good suplex right or not even the arm bar these, these days hey, today's ufc or today's mma look like kickboxing from distance right <laughs> you know yeah they're all different now but uh, back to muto yeah keiji muto recognized the influence and uh that millennium mood you know that the that the stuff in the air that uh, People are leaning towards MMA. You know, he Muto had to do something about it. You know? Yes. Yeah. But he was he conquered. You know, U, UWF. He was the one who conquered. You, if you remember, Nobuhiko Takada against Keiji Muto, 1994, 95. 95, I think. Dome. Right. Yeah, 95 Tokyo Dome. It was a climaxing of traditional pro wrestling style against your MMA-ish UWF style of wrestling, and a lot of people thought Takada was going to beat Muto. But the reality of wrestling business, <laughs> you know, whomever running a show will win. You know, it was a New Japan show, right? That's right. Yeah. And also, two, com- two enemy companies wouldn't work together when business is good. UWFI's business was, you know, like taking nosedive, you know. And uh, they came up with this formula that the UWF against New Japan would do the huge business. Which they did, and uh, the top card, of course, Takada against Muto. You know who's gonna be the best guy in Japan, right? Or the for, or world for that matter, right? You know, at the time, and Muto was so smart that he adapted existing wrestling movement like dragon screw, leg, you know, leg sweep into your traditional figure four leg lock. You know, figure four leg lock isn't isn't even considered MMA. It's so wrestling, right? right. Yeah, but uh, he adapted those traditional wrestling moves and made UWF Takata submit, and so so therefore that was uh, was the day UWF died really. Right. Yeah, and the uh, Muto came out came out on top. Yeah. So I mean, Muto, he he sees that you know the if he goes back to New Japan, that he's gonna have to deal with this, and so rather than doing that. Maybe there was something that he could do, like a sidestep, you know, instead of having to go the path that it looks like he would have to go. Go to America and then spend half the time in America and half the time in Japan and split. Or, yeah, yeah, he he needed to make a move, you know. And then uh, Jan Baba died in 1999, you know. And then one year, Misawa reign, you know, Misawa regime uh, of all Japan. And Jumbo Tsurura retired and Jumbo died the following year. And Misawa was going to put together a company, leaving Mrs. Baba behind. Right. And Channel 4 was going to come with him and all those plans. But just like you and I talked about the last episode, yes. Mrs. Ba- that was when Mrs. Baba decided not to quit. Right. right. Yeah, Skelton, Skelton crew. But uh, they brought out, you know, 
they brought back Tenru and more Americans, um, independent wrestlers from around the country. And yeah, they, they still put together All Japan card. And they needed somebody like Muto. Yeah. So uh, 2001, Muto pretty much worked, you know, the, the whole year with All Japan. Still under contract with New Japan, though. But the, he he was working pretty much full time schedules with you know new All Japan, yeah, All Japan though. But no Misawa, no Kobashi, no Kawa, no, Kawada was in it. But uh, no Kobashi, no Misawa, no you know no Taue, no Akiyama, nobody. I mean, or Steve Williams, Vader, nobody's in it. Well, no, but, Steve, uh, Steve Williams was there, but no oh, Vader. Oh, Steve Williams, right, right. He remained with All Japan, right? Yeah. But by then, by then he was he already had cancer by then. Yeah, he was kind of in rough shape, but he didn't want to leave yeah. All Japan hanging. Right, right. And also, he was more with Mrs. Baba, Mr. and Mrs. Baba's guy, you know? Right. And so, Muto, he, he's working he's working some New Japan, right? Because he does the G1 Climax yeah, yeah. that year. Sure, but he is sure. working All Japan, right, in 2001. Yeah, but not on his own. In the year 2001, he was still working through New Japan office. Yes. See, New Japan Secret, he had a, a, a plan of buying all Japan. Right. Kind of like WWE buying WCW, like a dead WCW. Right. And, and Muto is step one towards getting there, right? Yeah. But instead, Muto really went there. Right. Not through New Japan, you know? And but that was a Hiroshi Hase's idea. That was 2002, right? The beginning of, of January it, yeah, 2002. Yeah, actually quit, quit New Japan for real and signed with All Japan. Yeah. So t tell me this, right? So... There had been rumors out there that uh, initially, I think I think we actually talked about this last episode, was that uh, there, there was different people that Muto was trying to bring with him to all Japan, because obviously Kojima and Kashi yeah, come with him. But, but, and Kashi, yeah. Right, yeah. but supposedly, uh, uh, was it Koji Kanimoto, who was kind of in limbo contract-wise, right? His name uh. was kind of floated. And, and then Tanahashi, he tried to convince Tanahashi to come with him because he was his young boy. Oh, but the young boy, he was then rookie, though. Right. A very promising rookie. But, uh, yeah, Muto saw the potential, you know, that uh, this guy's money. You know? Right. Keep keep Tanahashi now, and then uh, in five years, this he'll be your John Cena, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, uh, so Muto, he fails to bring Tanahashi with him. To, you know. But then again, I, I don't I don't think he really tried that hard to bring people in, you know. The mainly three guys, Satoshi Kojima, Kendo Kashin, and Muto. Those three will make the top cluster. You know? let, let, let me ask you this. Uh, yeah. your, uh, what, what, in your opinion, right, yeah. what, what was the allure for Kashin and Kojima to leave? Right, because I mean, Kashin, he he's the the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. So so why would Kashin leave when he's sort of at the top? Why would Kojima leave? Right, because he's pretty promising young heavyweight. He could be on his way towards challenging for IWGP Heavyweight Title. So why so why would they leave? Therefore, Muto took the good, real good ones. Right, who was willing? See, when you look back, New Japan dressing room. I'm pretty sure that the Kojima, Satoshi Kojima and Kendo Kashin looked around dressing room. Right. It's like a, there's a 15 guys just like them, you know? When people like, you know, like, uh, for instance, Christian Cage, WWE is not going to do anything for that guy at all, right? Right, right. But uh, when you make a big deal out of it, you can make big deal out of big, uh, you know, big, big show white or christian cage or you know they can still make mileage you know like a, you can have pretty good mileage out of that guy right you can still get something out of them right so mm -hmm. so uh beginning of uh january 2002 caution mm -hmm. kojima muto they all leave to go to all yeah. japan full time along with uh five or six office employee to new right. japan's muto he he signs on full time all Japan, along with the two others, right? Uh, Kashin yeah. vacates the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title, and um, I believe was it was it Muto? Muto was tag team champion at the time, right? So he vacates his tag belt along with KF. If I'm not oh, mistaken. Uh, those are the, uh, the things I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so Muto he steps in, right, and uh, believe he's IW. Sorry, he's Triple Crown Heavyweight Champion. 
when he signs on full time. And I think he's also world tag team champion with Kea at the time as well. Right. So Side belts. Yeah, yeah. So so uh, Muto he he slides into being a full timer for All Japan, and this is essentially the beginning of the Muto era, right? So he's yes, a, a, yes. just a wrestler at first, right? It was yeah, but it wasn't all great ten years either. Because by the time Muto signed with All, J- all Japan, yes, All Japan didn't have network television. Right. Yeah. They're on what Gaura, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Gaura is a local channel. You know, it's uh, you can watch it on satellite package, and also it becomes cable channel when you go to Osaka and other part of the country. It's a UHF channel or something, and it exists, but not big. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And what's the difference is that channel. Nippon TV and TV Channel 4 Network or TV Asahi Channel 5, those the the company who can give you the annual budget, you know, like a huge budget, you know, for wrestling companies. Right, because you know? uh, All Japan relied on its deal with uh, TV, with Channel 4 to yeah, TV rights. get yeah. the money, to get the money to, to, to pay for things, right? Yeah, yeah. They were, they were paying, you know, Channel 4 and and TV Channel Five TV Asahi, they were paying like some ten million dollars a year or so, you know. Wow. For j- just rights, you know. That's you huge. can run a wrestling company. Yeah, that's big. And uh, not having it is uh, very devastating. But the Muto apparently didn't calculate that first, you know. He just kind of just took the dun- He took the dive. He he took the jump without thinking about those kind of things. And not quite. Yeah, that's why he brought five or six office worker from New Japan. But what was interesting is though that uh, all Japan, you know, office worker, you know, office employee staff, right. they are still there, and Muto brought in whole, you know, like a five or six New Japan staff, right? What was interesting is though, the the people Muto brought in, you know, New Japan office workers, uh-huh. they all grew up, they all grew up as New Japan Inoki fans, right? Right. When they came to all Japan company office environment, they didn't know how little they knew about all Japan tradition. <laughs> yeah, cause they were watching old videos at the uh, all Japan company office, right? They're right. all watching videos, you know, and these Muto's people didn't know how popular the funks were. Right. Or the or watching old video of Mill Maskers or something. It's like, oh, I didn't know he was that popular. It's like, what do you know, right? It's like, it's kind of almost divided, you know. All Japan fans was always traditionally all Japan fans, you know. Right. All the American superstars, Baba, Jumbo, Tenru, you know, the Brody, Hanson, Harley Race, you know, you name it, right? Right. But in New Japan, had their, their own their sets of superstars, you know. You have Hulk Hogan, you had, you know, Andre the Giant, you had Taiga Jeet Singh, the, you have your Scott Norton, Bam Bam Bigelow, Vader, you know, their own Americans. So right. It's like, uh, for some reason, the, the the people Muto brought in, you know, the professional, right? Right. Wrestling company, office employees, they knew very little about all Japan's history. What was interesting? Yeah. Yeah. That that sounds uh, like a, a big uh, like a culture clash, right? Culture yeah, I think clash. so because the way all Japan and Giant Baba ran the company, you know, ran the company and the wrestling itself. And the way Antonio Inoki ran New Japan Pro Wrestling and uh, storylines, they're all different. That's why it was good, because I grew up watching both, you know? Right. Like National League and American League, or MGM movie against Warner movie, or your, uh, I don't know, Mickey Mouse against... Uh, Bugs Bunny. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. I, I get you, I get you. So well, it's good to have both, though, right? Oh no, most definitely. You you want to? That's that's the beauty about being a a fan of pro wrestling, in in, in whatever decade you grew up in, is you want to be able to have yeah, the best of both worlds. Uneasy, on um, uneasy feeling right away was that when Muto comes in to All Japan Ring, mm-hmm. the match, his match will always look like New Japan Muto match. Right. You know, whereas when you have Kawada and Tenru, you will expect all Japan atmosphere a little bit more. Yeah, because they came from that system. They they they're from the all Japan. It works, school works different too. Yeah, right. yeah. 
And uh, Muto brought in his own rhythm and his own music kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so. And also, yes. yeah, also all, all the Americans left, you know, Stan Hansen retired and Muto's version of All Japan, you know, tried to bring in people like Goldberg, you know. Right. Yeah, right. That was right after WCW, you know. Let, let's let's talk about that. Let's kind of uh, move a bit forward. So yeah. Muto is a talent, just a talent. Uh, for about a year or so, and then in 2003, I believe, is when he uh, gets the keys to the castle, the so to speak, from Mrs. Baba. He winds up becoming uh, uh, president. Yes, he becomes president of All Japan, and uh, yeah. Tenryu is is on his way out slowly yeah, right. but surely because you know the whole war uh, uh, revival thing in in All Japan. And, uh, wrestle one, wrestle one. Right, uh, not the wrestle one, but the war. Uh, uh, World World of Japan, yeah, WJ, right, WJ. Yeah. That's right. And, and just just real quick for the folks that aren't familiar with uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, WJ. Oh, so ill fated. Yeah, it lasted only a year. Uh, it was a. Uh, it's easy easy to you know uh, sum it up that the Riki Choshu not being happy with New Japan, he decided to leave. You know, Riki Choshu, Masa Saito. A um, couple other guys, you know, Kenso Suzuki and uh, Ken, uh, Kensuke Sasaki, of course, and a couple more rookies. They, they try to run the company for a year. And then Tenru signed with his friend Riki Choshu instead. Right? So. Were, were they weren't they supposed to have? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I, I this, cause this is this is stuff that I I read on the the <laughs> okay. English speaking side of, of the sure. covering Japanese pro wrestling, but I had sure. read somewhere that the idea was that those two Tenryu and Chosu they were going to have a series of seven singles Sing matches, single matches, and, yeah, and then within night. within the fourth one or the third one, uh, somebody got hurt. Yeah, somebody got hurt, and then they just said to hell with it, and they just went to <laughs> not working program with each other anymore. Because they were like, they were pushing like 50 then, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But then again, there's a group, you know, like a certain group or amount of fans in Japan that who, who, who can always watch Ricky Choshu against Tenru single match. It's kind of like a Dusty Rose against Ric Flair. Right. You know, how doesn't matter how many times they've done, they'll probably have a good match, you know? And, and people will want to see it too. Yeah, yeah, not vast majority anymore, but uh, yeah, because they're not in their prime. Right. But they have name. I mean, huge name, right? Right, exactly. So, yeah. so uh, uh, Tenryu decides to start working with uh, Wrestle. Ricky Choshu's new, new company, yeah, uh, Double J, World Japan. Right, and, and so um, eventually, you know, like we talked about, uh, Muto becomes president of all Japan. Now he's in the driver's seat, right? So let's yeah, talk yeah. about the, the the Muto. He's now president, right? He he has the yeah. majority uh, stakes in the company and he says I want to make all Japan in, in my vision, right? And it's like you said, he he brings his rhythm, his style to all Japan. Keiji Muto come from Inoki school of wrestling, okay? Yes. Mitsuharu Misawa comes from Giant Baba school of wrestling. Right. The biggest difference in the booker is that Giant Baba as a booker, Misawa as a booker, he watches everybody's match from the opening match to the, the match, I mean, right before you, you know. Every single wrestler's match is viewed by booker Misawa. Right. And Misawa knows everybody's <clears throat> strong point and weakness and shortcomings and strength and uh, character and uh, what can be done with this guy, okay? Right. And that's a great booker. He watches every single wrestlers, every single match. That's Baba School of Wrestling. Right. I'm not saying that the Inoki School is is more selfish, but the Inoki and Muto can be kind of similar. That he's not very interested in other people. He's a genius on his own. Right. He can come up with great match for him. Him. You know what I'm saying? Just, just Muto himself, right? Yeah, but he uh, he's not very interested in other people's other interests, you know, and and that's where where Kaz Hayashi comes comes in as assistant booker. Yes, please let's talk about Kaz. Yeah, he's like, huge. yeah you watch. Yeah, please watch everybody else's match and you do this. And Muto is not into everybody else's work. Right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. When you have single match against Tenru, yeah, you'll come up with something really creative. 
if you have single match against Toshiaki Kawada or something, it's a dream match, right? Right. He'll, he'll come up with something really unique and something that people hasn't seen. But somebody against somebody in third match, he's not interested in that. Right. Yeah. So that is slowly but surely become evident that, look, something is really wrong with this All Japan lineup, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because it's not entirely Muto's fault. You will need team player type, or not the team player, but I'd say more like a locker room leader, quarterback type guy. Something I learned that back then too, that the booker has to be somebody who experienced main event position. Right. You know, Katsuhayashi, good booker, pretty creative, and a good guy, you know. Right. But he cannot put together main event for you. You know? He he it's, he seemed to uh, really have his finger on the pulse of like the undercard junior heavyweights, right? Seemed to yeah, go really good. You know, and I know that the, what Japanese junior heavyweight matches they do like a hundred moves, you know, hundred miles an hour. Right. You do twenty, thirty, forty different moves, you know, and the sequel to it, and it's like <laughs> I can't remember, you know. Right. But they do a lot, you know. Therefore. You're not supposed to be able to do the heavyweight matches, you know. Yeah. And, you know, Muto was using American like you know, um, Rosie and Umaga. Right. Let, let's talk a little bit about that. It is he he has Taka, right? Taka is his uh, entry point into the WWE, the Pulse, right? Because he 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 comes back, right? He 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 had uh, K Dojo, right? He had K Dojo. Yeah. yeah. But but Taka starts years in in America in Puerto Rico. Right, and, and, and Taka uh, yeah. comes back and he starts working with Muto, and that is the the guy to start bringing in all these uh, former WWE guys, you know, Johnny Stamboli and Chuck Palumbo, but you know, oh, 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 former WWE guy, yeah, yeah. Uh, WCW guys, right? Right. Like uh, uh, the Wall, yeah. Or uh, what's his, what's his name? Um, PJ. PJ. Um. Uh, just incredible. Yeah. Right. Right. Eventually, yeah, yeah. you know, Incredible comes back, and they have the one of the most well-known uh, stables in the mid, the two thousands for all Japan is uh, the Roughly Obsess and Destroy. Oh, right, yeah, Taka's team, yeah. Right, yeah. Taka's I team. I forgot that. Right. Yeah, we, 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 and... we had a, a Tayo Kea on the show not too long ago, and he okay. talked to us about his time, you know, doing that, and, uh, you know, uh, it's a very then interesting they, group. Then they created the Buru Murders, right? Right, with Taro, Ta- Taru. Yeah, right. And so you have these Muto two groups. Muto didn't even know who Taru was, you know? Muto doesn't follow other people's wrestling. Right. No, he might watch main event from other companies, but uh, he's not into other companies' first match guys that much, you know. So, so maybe you so, can answer me this then. I, I I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry, but I just I had a curiosity. So yeah, h- how how did Taro and how did Taka get into the picture? Old then? Japan. Yeah, how did they get into the picture? They needed wrestlers, of course. Right. Yeah, because Muto came in pretty much skeleton old Japan. Right. Yeah. And uh, the Mrs. Baba was still there. Then it's, you expect 30 wrestlers to be on the card. Right. And so they yeah. need all the help they can get. So they, they get Kaz, who was languishing in uh, HWA, which was uh, uh, an even smaller farmer li- farm league for the WWE. And he decides he doesn't want to be there anymore. And so he takes the plane. Yeah. And he, he, Muto is waiting there at the airport. And that he becomes the guy in the you junior division. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, and right. Caution it winds up leaving. Crew, though. Yeah, but the bright side of it is that uh, all those guys, Misawa's guys, left Old Japan and you know, formed Pro Wrestling Noir. That's a new era. Right. It's same Old Japan, but uh, it's a skeleton. So it's it's good to have Muto's guys, like Muto's 10 guys in there. It's, it's a brand new era. So it, it had to be that way. Yeah. Right. And uh, we, we have, like I said, we have a, a period of time where there is a ton of gaijin and they're working in all Japan, just tour in and tour out. Like you said, Rosie, Jamal, Chuck Palumbo, yeah. Johnny Stamboli. Johnny Stamboli, yeah. actually, he winds up doing that gimmick where he dresses up as the great Muta and going up against Muto. And then Muto 
brings back the great Muta, but you know, uh, a, a new version of uh, Muta. He doesn't have the uh, hair anymore, and he right. doesn't have just regular uh, face paint. He has the elaborate mask. Yeah. yeah, a completely different new costume. Yeah. Yeah, can, you know what? Let me, let me ask you about this because you know we're we're both big fans. What did you think about that when when they did that whole storyline? Uh, what what did you think? When they said, "Hey, only harmful." Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it really harms. Yeah, because it harms you know Mut Great Muta's legacy, and they know it's not real Great Muta. You know that the new one, you right? Know? And uh, the that the mentality this, they had they had a different mentality too. That, uh, but anyhow, that uh, they all, this Muto's version of all Japan was going to bring this guy in and pretended you know to have like a fake Stone Cold. Bad idea, huh? Right. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. I, I, are we talking about um, Hernandez? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah Hernandez yeah. came in as fake Kurt Angle, right? He came in as fake Kurt Angle. Amazing Red came in as a, a, like a Rey Mysterio type, right? Oh, the little Amazing Red. Right. Like, talented, but yeah. a complete independent type person. Exactly. And then yeah. the last one was, uh, I believe, Alex Skipper came in. And I think he was working like a La Parca or something like that kind of gimmick, right? So yeah, whoever they can book, you know, the Takas friend from Mexico or the borderline, you know, that the, in the California area, that the, there are a lot of wrestlers who wants to come to Japan. Right. You know? The era was pretty hard for American wrestlers too, because now it's see, WCW is gone, ECW is gone, and WWE became the the the, the sole major company in wrestling. It's so hard to get in. But right. there's the wrestlers out there who's looking for work, and you're if you're talented and willing, you want to go to Japan, right? Right. And uh, yeah, and then uh, this Muto's era of old Japan, Keiji Muto didn't have his like main event rival, you know. Right. There was no rival to him at the. I mean, Kawada, but I mean, you can only do that series for then so he long. He left. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, and also one time um, Muto had an idea that he brought in Don Fry, you know, right? Yeah, to have a title match, single program, and he knew, you know, he thought he was the, the sure, you know, Buddha can sell out, but it didn't work that way. It's like he didn't understand. It's like bringing in Don Fry didn't work. What works? But uh, bringing in Don Fry for single match program is already New Japan mentality, right? You know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, let let's go backwards just a little bit. We 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 were talking about you know this that and the other the the R O and D and voodoo murders, but we yeah. also were talking about the Wrestle One concept, the original Wrestle One concept. Yeah, right? it was it was a time that the people desperate that they would do anything because wrestling business was taking nosedive and MMA Pride uh, K One that those guys uh, getting popular and also. They have money to play around, you know. Right, and in K1, they decided they want to get. And K1 and Pride, when they were together, they created hustle. Remember? Right. The, the the dynamite, right? K1 and, and and Pride, they do that special event that that yeah. uh, that Eventually one. Eventually, they split into two different company, but the, they were together first. Right. Yeah, K1 do the kickboxing and the Pride do the MMA, but the, they were running show together then, and until they split. Right. But. Uh, they thought they were strong. The business was strong enough to go into traditional pro wrestling um, portion of it, and uh, they came up with Hustle. Then later on, they came up with Wrestle One, the original Wrestle One. Right. They were those were the wrestling shows run by non wrestling people. Bad right. idea, huh? Right, right, right. But yeah. but they had the money, and so they were yeah. bringing in all these guys. They brought in Masuda. The they brought in yeah, Punk. Like Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, Mick Foley. That's where Goldberg comes in, Goldberg, right? Goldberg, yeah. yeah, Goldberg, yeah. They all came in, and Great Muta himself worked. I mean, took the booking independently. Right. You know? yeah. and, and so, you know, you have this this train wreck, right? It's what it is. It's a train wreck oh, God. of the original and, uh, Wrestle 1. And the, and the five years you know, previously, Nobuhiko Takada was a hope, you know, that uh, he was an uh, ace in the superstar of UWFI and now he's wearing Hitler costume doing gimmick, you know? Right, and, 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 and hustle, right? <laughs> oh, bad period that I want to forget, you know? Yeah, a, a lot of people, you know, they... they <laughs> a lot of people don't remember 
the hustle. hustle. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is that if you take it seriously, right? If you if you you try to enjoy I it like a wrestling it. product, you're you're not gonna get that out of it. You won't get fulfilled. But if you see it as a, an abstract thing, right? It's almost like a that's the direction almost where where I mean, because DDT. It, it sometimes will borderline an absurdity, right? Sometimes, right? But it still has great talent, and they still have good yeah, booking. Yeah, but they don't, DDT is fine because they don't mock professional wrestling. Right, that's true. A bunch of young guys who grew up to be um, as a wrestling fan, and they were doing backyard, you know, backyard wrestling before they turned pro. Right. And they are a bunch of wrestling fans who knows everything, little little trivia about wrestling, and they're fans and. Their mentality is fine. Right. But the hustle in Wrestle One was run by people who, who they thought they knew wrestling. Right. The worst kind. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, we 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 go back or we're weaving forward now, and, and so this is you know the Wrestle One you know debacle, and the worst thing is is that uh, uh, this is around the same time that that Muto thinks that bringing in you know uh, Goldberg. Is going yeah. to 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 help bring you know the crowds in, but he oh, yeah, squashes Kojima in. and Kea in like less than ten minutes on both of them, right? So he just squashes yeah. their best guys like they're nothing, and, and Goldberg doesn't even really come back. So it's pretty much like money wasted. Yeah, and then they paid hundred thousand for a gold bar, you know, one week service. Wow, hundred grand. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that is a lot of change. You could have got some really good, you know, independent I talent. Mean, ten but... guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is yeah. crazy to think. And and, and and I've watched both of those matches, and it's no disrespect to my man Kaya or Kojima, but it's just like, why? You just sit there and, and you Goldberg watch the match. Was it's terrible. Injured. Yeah. Goldberg was already injured coming in, so he wasn't going to have jackhammer. Right. So they used spear as a finish instead, but the spear as a finish is kind of lame. Right? right. Right. Yeah. People expect you to do the gold gold bark thing and do the jackhammer thing and do all the barking and all those things. You know, to be just like what you see on TV. You right. know, the gold wasn't gold bug wasn't the same guy. You know. Right. We get to the mid part of the 2000s, right? And mm -hmm. Kinsuke, right? He yeah. starts working with All Japan too. Now, m maybe you can help out right uh, after World World uh, World Japan. Right. So so Kinsuke, he Yeah. He he's working New Japan, right, as a freelancer, right. But he's yeah. also working with All Japan, right. So, did Hase bro broker that deal, or who who helped bring in Kinsuke into All I, Japan? I think Kinsuke was on his own. He was big enough as a person. Right. Yeah. So he just See, comes to Muto uh, and he Hiroshi, says, "Yeah, Hiroshi Hase is not as involved because he's a real politician." Right. That's right. He he kind of he's out of the picture almost, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As an active wrestler, yeah. Right. So, so active personnel of wrestling. So so Kinsuke he comes over and he starts becoming a big deal in all Japan, right? He brings over yeah, yeah. Uh, Nakajima. He's equal, he's he's equal to your three musketeer. Three right. musketeers: Muto and Hashimoto and Chono. You know. Right. And by then, Hashimoto, you know, was fired by New Japan. He started his own Zero One company too. Right. Yeah, chaos, huh? Oh yeah. Uh, <clears throat> for for some of the folks that that are uh, not familiar with Zero One, Zero it still One still exists. Yeah, Zero, yeah, Zero One still exists, and it was initially started by as like a satellite of New Japan, right? They had right. some New Japan. They became independent from it. Yeah. yeah, they had New Japan personnel, and uh, Anoki even give them the NWA uh, uh, affiliation, right? I guess it ain't the same NWA either. <laughs> right, because you know? uh, 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 Hashimoto wins the, the NWA heavyweight title, and every title that Zero One uses is uh, uh, NWA title, NWA... Uh, international junior heavyweight title, NWA intercontinental or title, or intercontinental something. Yeah. Right, right. Well, because NWA name meant 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 a lot in Japan in seventies and eighties. You right. know, it was the biggest company in, in in the world, right? But by the nineties, not 90s. the company, but the organization. Right. You know? Yeah, above everything, kind of thing. So the myth still worked. Right. I mean, some people like uh, older than fifties or like like uh, real older fans in Japan, they still believe in NWA. Right. National Wrestling Alliance, right. undisputed World Heavyweight Championship, right. that kind of thing. Yeah. So um, and that was the 
the whole NWA myth that created Inoki creating IWGP. Right. Yeah. So uh, uh, Hashimoto, he goes and he starts working with All Japan, right? And he winds up winning the Triple Crown, and he winds up feuding with with Muta yeah, cause and Kawada. Hashim Hashim Hashimoto and Muto are good friends, you know? Right. And all, you know, Muto's All Japan and Hashimoto's Zero One, they could work a program together. Right. Yeah. Right. So it was like an inner promotional thing, and it worked for a while. But it all looked like New Japan the reruns. It did. <laughs> it, it really did. <laughs> it did. But but it, it did, did create some really good matches. I have to say, um, it it I, I know that there are some people out there that are they're fans of Naoya Ogawa, right? But the thing is, is I, I'm not, Ogawa, yeah, yeah I, I'm right. not a big fan of his. But I will say this: Kawada basically helped him have the best match he ever had in his career. Yeah, because he stood there and took it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, they they just basically it, it's a slugfest. You know, it, it's a slugfest between the two of them, and, yeah. and it, it, it they didn't there was no winner. It, it went to a double KO, if I'm not mistaken. Right, right. Or you double know. DQ or referee stoppage or something. Right, but and fantastic also, match. Naoya Ogawa is also another epitome of dark age of Japanese professional wrestling. Right, that he was more like a. He wandered into professional wrestling business, not knowing what he wanted. You know, right? And he, you know, he was a judo Olympic, in you know, World Cup winner and a silver medal winner in Olympic, and he was like a legitimate, like a real, I mean, top of the judo world, right? Right. But there is no such thing as professional judo, and to be able to maintain that, the, he had a sponsorship, you know, you know, the company sponsorship. To keep, you know, keep you know doing the judo thing, but uh, the the annual income only hundred hundred fifty thousand dollar is about the, all you make, all you can make. Right. No more than that. And Naoya Ogawa, uh, mid nineties, came to Giant Baba's old Japan and wanted to be a professional wrestler. Right. And Baba asked Ogawa, "How much are you making now with judo?" And he said, so and so, hundred, hundred, hundred fifty. And John Baba told him, all right, keep that job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but and, Inoki doesn't feel the same, right? And it was Sakaguchi, uh, Inoki's assistant booker and also a president of the company at the time. Right. Seiji Sakaguchi is also a former world champion judo. Right. Yeah, and then, uh, oh, great, the golden rookie, you know, that the former judo, uh, Sakaguchi was going to take care of this guy, you know? Yeah. And, and uh, New Japan traditionally always loved uh, athletes from another sport. You know, if you remember Kitao. Oh, yeah. The grand champion, Samoa wrestler. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That the, those guys can be that the golden rookie, you know, you don't start from first match. You can be rookie and you can be green, but they can be placed in main event cluster. Right. Make it look like an MMA match, you know. But that won't work uh, the same in all Japan, though. Nope, no, not quite. But uh, Kawada individually was a tough guy, yeah. you know, that he would be standing there, take whatever Ogawa would do to you, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah, naturally. So, yeah. so all Japan, they they work with zero one, right? And, and Muto's all Japan, and right. Hashimoto's zero one, yeah. And, and so it, it, we're hitting the mid. 2000s right and, and like we yeah. were saying you know uh the the all japan briefly worked with hustle you know the yeah. uh, uh, uh kawada defended the triple crown heavyweight title uh against he also Mick Foley. hustle too as a dangerous k yes yeah. yes yeah. And, and, yeah. and i believe you know, me, i never now that, that we can tell that the, how bad money was you right know, like working for all japan that you have to take independent booking from hustle right they'll pay you directly like uh the, the amount of money you make per match is like a, a lot more than uh, what you normally make. Right. That's hustle, right? And uh, that really destroyed the landscape of wrestlers and wrestling, and uh, um, it really, really destroyed a lot of things. Because even the serious loyal wrestling fans, they were confused. They didn't know which group they should support, which shows they go to. There's a hustle one weekend. Next weekend you have all Japan in 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 in, in zero one show. There's pro wrestling nor. There's still New Japan. There's a couple other groups that they have to follow. There's women's wrestling right. every weekend. There's like a, you, you 
you could not possibly go to all the shows. Right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was really, really confusing, you know, time period that uh, going to going to Hashimoto's Zero One show. It looks like half the guys are from all Japan. Right. You go to all Japan match. Half the guys working was Zero One's Hashimoto's guys. Go to Hustle. You have mixture of other, you know, together. And they'll give you Kevin Nash against Great Muta or something with no reason called. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. I, I get what you mean. Yeah, because I, I do remember, uh, I think it was called Dream Stage Entertainment, right? That was the company, yeah, right, the, right, the parent right. company of uh, Pride. So they had a fat wallet. So they're able to go and buy wrestlers. Kevin not not, out, not outright. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they, get, they, uh, they were going to they were gonna bring in Hulk Hogan too. Right, right. And then they yeah. made a parody uh, in 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 zero one, and then he wound up working uh, Ogawa, right? He he did the parody of Hulk Hogan in, in Hulk Hustle. Grew, grew up as a uh, Hulk Hogan fan, right? You know? um, and as a as a businessman, as you know, the strong and the smart businessman as Hulk Hogan was, Hulk Hogan wanted to have a single match against Naoya Ogawa at one point. Wow. Yeah, because that could be a Tokyo Dome main event. Yeah, that's true. That could be a big, yeah. a big, a uh, big money match. Yeah, yeah. Not, not a wrestling tour, but uh, Hulk Hogan came to Japan with his son a couple times. Right. Yeah. Um. If you remember uh, GTR, uh, -huh. uh, you know the, the Toyota Skyline car, like a five-speed. You know, it oh, yeah. only existed like a five-year period. Right. They collect classic, you know, uh, like heavyweight cars. You know? Right. And Hulk Hogan and his son Nick came to Japan and buy parts of GTRs. Right. Yeah. And Naoya Ogawa happens to be another GTR fan. Oh, okay. And, so that yeah, was a connection. His, yeah, mint condition GTR in his garage. Doesn't even drive. <laughs> <laughs> Hulk Hogan's garage, he has 20 classic cars. He doesn't even drive, you know, but uh, the same way. So, so Hulk Hogan did come to Japan just for vacation a right. couple times and had lunch meeting with Ogawa and he thought he planted the seed, you know. Right. Someday, Someday, Hulk Hogan against Ogawa can take place at the Tokyo Dome. Doesn't know when, but right. the, the seeds were planted. You never know which flower may blossom. Right. So, this is rest. So, so we're, we're in the uh, mid-2000s, and, and, and All Japan is definitely struggling, right? They've, yeah. they've worked with Zero and One Hashimoto. People, yeah, a lot of people played with a lot of different ideas. Nothing worked, right, at right. the time. Yeah. Right. And, and so Muto is kind of beginning to get a little desperate. But then... Uh, um, this is also an important time because uh, I believe 2000, uh, I want to say 2004-2005 is uh, when um, Noah and All Japan, they begin to start cooperating again, right? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, right, a little right, bit. Right, right. Uh, uh, a caution. Was it? It's the uh, the Tokyo Dome show, right? The the yeah. all the, yeah, the, 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 the Tokyo Misawa Tokyo as, as a booker, you know, Misawa as a booker, so smart that the, the main event, they made sure he was... Complete pure pro wrestling no single match, right. which was Kobashi against Akiyama. Right, top right. of their craft, you know. Then Misawa pretty much volunteered to have tag team match against Muto's team. Right, yeah. So I it was a kind of dream match, Muto and Misawa in the same ring at the same time, and they wrestled maybe a few minutes, you know, tag in tag out, but right. the single match never happened. Now is it? It's it's. From from what you know, what has been you know put out there is uh, yeah. Muto and Masao were actually friends in, in, outside of business, right? They were uh, friends. It's more personally. like they respected each other, right? You know, yeah, from like a your home run guy from other team, you know. Oh, okay. They, they were never really friends, you know. But the New York Yankees, you know, you have your uh, whomever, you know, that that guy's huge. I have a lot of respect for that guy. Right. I watch him on TV. Right. And Misawa was always watching Muto and Chono Hashimoto on television too. Right. I mean what the other guys you know, what the other side of the guys doing. I get yeah. you. I get you. Yeah. So so they was under Babas and Inoki. They were they never had political power until they have their time. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and so uh Kea, well, like I said, we had him on the show and he was saying that originally it was gonna be Kawada and Muto were gonna be a team against Misawa and Ogawa, but Kawada said no, and so Kea wound up being put into the match instead. And Ko Kea is very familiar with Misawa; he's very familiar mm -hmm. with Ogawa, so it just wound up working out 
uh, I think better that way actually, you know, because then Kei also Kei think about Muto and Kawada against against Misawa and Ogawa. Who's going down? It looks yeah. like Kawada. Yeah, <laughs> you know, unless Misawa's doing the honor, you know. Right. Yeah. So Might, you, maybe Misawa could could have done that because it's his show, you know. Right. So so you have fences mended, right? And, and at this point in time, uh, uh, New Japan is not working so much with uh, All Other Japan. Fans. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and so all Japan is kind of, you know, they're out uh, like they're, they're like on an island. Right. They're kind of out on their own, kind of having to work with what they have, you know, and the, it's getting a little bit tougher. Right. But but we should highlight the fact that um, in this time period in all Japan, you have a lot of uh, the, the junior heavyweight division. Right. It, it's it's not obviously it's not going to be as big of a deal. As a, uh, like a Shuji Kondo, you mean? Uh, uh, yeah, like well, Shuji Kondo and, and Kaz and uh, eventually sure. Nakajima, and they bring in the right. like, Silver Young King. Nakajima. Right, and so the right. all, all Japan's junior heavyweight division is is slowly beginning to become something to really pay attention to. It's obviously not going to be the top of the, not the, a draw, the, not a draw, no, but but something that is uh, different, right? Because historically, all Japan's junior heavyweight division from seventy two to about 2002, 2003, it is an afterthought, right? They have some fantastic matches, but it's not anything akin to what is going on in New Japan New where Japan, the, yeah, the junior yeah, heavyweight right. division is like, you know, is, is special, you know. Yeah, it's I'd see, I, you know, also, Jan, Jan, as a promoter, Jan Baba didn't really think so much of junior heavy, heavyweight division. Right. Pro wrestling is always heavyweight. Big right. guys. Baba, Jumbo, Tenru, Stan, Brody, you know. Yeah, and, and big guys. Misawa, right, and, and Noah, right. One of the yeah. the, the we we say it's a bone of contention was that he wanted to give the junior heavyweights something like a, a spotlight, right? Not the main event, sure. but but a spotlight. So different the, dimensions. Yeah. yeah. So so in Noah, the junior heavy heavyweight division is, is exploding. They have tons and tons of, of great guys. They have Kani Maru. They have uh, uh, Maru Fuji. Right, they have yeah. K- Kenta, not not Kenta, Kenta Kobashi, young Kenta. yeah, young yeah. Kenta, right? And, and and then they're bringing in guys like Ricky Marvin. They bring in like Juventud Guerrera, yeah. yeah. So they 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 had a an exploding junior heavyweight division, and all Japan is sort of sort of has that, right? They they don't yeah, have the great talent. matches, yes, great matches that people don't pay ticket for, right, right, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. th- this is a, a very it's different, real, very unfortunate, yeah, v- very different from what's going on from the the all Japan of the past. But you're right. It, it's not a, a top box office draw. It's not what people are paying money to see. It's just oh, this is what's right. going to be when on the card. When you go to the building, it's all great matches. So, oh yeah, from top to bottom, great matches. But it wasn't really popular, you right. know. Yeah. So it, it, yeah, I it, just had to wait until you know new star rising. You know, we had to wait for Hiroshi Tanahashi, Shinsuke Nakamura, Katsuyori Shibata type that generation right yeah. and, and and they're having a tough time with that developing the, those kind of talents in, in their dojo right like they have what kazushi mayamoto right who's a, a solid wrestler you know I, I hear he's a very nice guy but he he wasn't somebody that was exciting and he never moves past the the mid card right he, he teams up with tomoaki hanma they the turmeric storm and, and after a few years yeah. that kind of burns out right so they have a, a tough time trying to find somebody that's that's going to be like the new hope and then a couple of yeah. years later they, they get their hands on suwama right uh, hase Su- yeah helped scout Su- suwama during during muto's era of old japan they you know they debuted suwama right you know and they debuted kai, guys like uh, kai or hiroshi yamato the pretty promising rookies you know they right. went to different places. Or, or Tai Chi, somebody like that. You know? Right, Tai Chi Ishikari or Ishikiri, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tai Chi started with old Japan but ended up being you know, signing with New Japan. Yeah. Right. Because he was Kawada's boy. Yes. Yeah. He he was Kawada's boy and uh that that to me is still like uh when I first, when I put that together, that was still kind of baffling, right? Because I could see nothing uh, uh in Ishikari that, really? that reminded me of Kawada. Yeah. Well, well, but the way he does a stretch before the you know, before the match. Well, that's true. Yeah. That that's yeah, very true. Yeah. That's, that's a resemblance. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to work like him. No. But the, when he does some kicks, it's a little bit of a Kawada in there. Yeah. 
Um, there, yeah. there, there is a, they, they both wind up working in, in Hustle, right? Yeah. And, and there's yeah. A, a very famous sketch where uh, Kawada, he is, uh, he is, uh, he has a rivalry with uh, this guy. His name is uh, Monster C, right? Yeah. And, and so uh, Taishi, he, he's stretching and he looks like a C. And so Kawada thinks that he is Monster C. So he winds up kicking Tai Chi. And Tai Chi is like, hey, what are you kicking me for? And he's like, oh, I thought you were Monster C for a second. It, it's pretty hilarious. I, I have the match somewhere on my hard drive. Um, oh, never, <laughs> never happens with All Japan Ring. It, no, it, no, 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 no. It looks like a hustle scenario to me. Oh, you know? it totally was. A, it was. A, it was in a hustle show. It was a hustle background yeah. skit. Yeah. It's pretty it's funny. Tr- I'm, uh, yeah, I've been trying so hard to forget the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know, I, I don't, I don't blame you because when, when hustle was happening in real time, I, I was disgusted. I wanted nothing to do with it. I didn't want to watch oh, it. Right? It, it no, was terrible. I didn't like it. Um, it was the only. I didn't like it at all. The only good thing that I enjoyed, and, and this is terrible, was uh, I thought Yinling was. Very, very beautiful. And I Sexy. was like, oh, yeah, she was, yeah, she was but, dropped dead gorgeous. Oh, and also, we have to add one more thing, that the, it was uh, that every, your everyday life is becoming very Internet-oriented around that time period. Yes, yes, that's you know what true. I'm yeah. Windows 98, yes. 99, 2000, Internet, yes. But the uh, year 2000, 2004, 2005... You cannot live without internet, right? Right, absolutely, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So the life has changed, and the magazine business, you know, the traditionally Japanese wrestling fans were so reading oriented, right? Right. But the uh, year two thousand six, two thousand seven, Gang Magazine went out of business. Weekly Fight went out of business. Right. The Weekly Pro Wrestling, the magazine I worked for over 35 plus years right they were going down but uh, they weren't gonna quit so uh, all these writers editors graphic designer photographer all these guys you know they were brought into meeting that uh, we took the big huge pay cut right and uh, if you can't take this pay cut go someplace else and and test the possibility right if you if you are happy with this new pay scale please stay here it's like i wasn't so sure and then and i took that pay cut and the stayed with magazine for another six years or so yeah wow that, yeah. I, I thank you for for giving us some of that personal insight because yeah i, I would have to agree that the 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 magazine culture uh, of japanese yeah. pro wrestling was it's huge a, huge yeah. right for such a it, long time it, and also that the articles and stories and the video footage that that's uh, on the internet a lot of times the story was written by non-professional Right, I mean, like a fan started writing it. Right, and on 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 the internet screen with the wrestling website or something. Right, you could never tell if it's professional or nineteen year old guy doing it. But a magazine, you knew they were professional. Uh, professional, yes. Yeah. yes, yeah. But at the same time, it's a magazine in general. You know, when you go to Japanese subways and trains, and now nobody's reading magazines, nobody's reading tabloid. Right, they are all looking at the phone. Right, right. That's the kind of era we are living in, and then I think that the wrestling magazine, that the whole culture was dying. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. I, I could totally believe that. Um, one of the first trips that I got to take into San Francisco, right? Uh, yeah. uh, Kuno Kuno Ki. Uh, I, I forget. Kinokuniya? Yes, the, Kinokuniya the, the, the bookstore. bookstore. Right. Oh, huge bookstore. Right. Yeah, so, so they have one in, in San Francisco, right? The, yeah, the bookstore. Yeah, yeah. So um, there's one in Portland too, yeah. So one of the first times I got to get my hands on weekly, right? The the weekly pro wrestling, yeah. yeah. Um, I, there, I, I was like, this is the most awesome thing I'd ever seen before, as far as you know, Japanese pro wrestling, <laughs> because it easily trumped anything that I got my. I mean, look, look, I, I grew up as a PWI guy, right? Pro Wrestling Illustrated, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hu- huge magazine, right? They cover Japan. They cover Mexico. Yeah, and, but and, the news is three months old. Exactly, right? So so, so the, the, the <laughs> magazine... And then the, during Monday Night War era, they try to do the weekly newsletter, yeah. which wasn't the greatest thing. You know? No. So so yeah. the, 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 the weekly pro, uh, when I got my and hands... Dunk magazine. Yeah, yeah they, they, were, they were amazing. It was clear. And Japanese magazines at the time, like in the 80s and 90s, right. you know, or especially this Monday Night War era, Monday Night Raw and Nitro, 
and even the ECW pay-per-views. Right. We were putting this uh, Japanese magazine was putting the, those articles five day turnaround. Right. I mean WrestleMania from last week's already in the magazine. Right. And, and so yes. I, I was always impressed, and I still am today with, with uh, uh, the, the Japanese wrestling magazines. Just they're so much better. The quality is just like. It's it's like night and day compared to I used to American stay up strength. all night doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, you know, from from the bottom of my heart and a lot of other uh, uh, Western wrestling fans, we, we thank you. You know, we we appreciate all the effort that everybody the that, that ever worked like, magazines. Yeah, we, like you put in a lot of love. Life. Yeah, I gave my life to the magazine all my twenties and thirties into forties. Yeah. Well, it's brilliant work, you know, and the good thing is, is that people still are holding on to these magazines like holy grails, and, and little by little, yeah. people well, are, are scanning them, you know. The weekly pro wrestling magazine still exists today. Yes. You know? Yeah, I, I try to get... It, yeah, it looks like New Japan magazine, you know? <laughs> Doesn't it? Yeah. it? It pretty much does, you know? Well, different writers, different editors, different photographers, and most importantly, different readership. Yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, most Different of the time, reader. most of the time, like Lot, you said, yeah, all the fans left. Yeah, but like you said, most of the time it, it's a, a, a New Japan centric magazine, right? Uh, uh, but you'll see yeah, a few so, articles. Yeah. But, but realistically, New Japan is the most popular right company, right? Yeah. Right, and, and yeah. so um, you know, in the major league production, yes. Yeah. The only company does Tokyo Dome and Budokans, you know. They they have the they have the 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 bankroll, you know. They have the 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 ba the backer. They have the money to do it, right? Yeah, Cy Cyberfight's trying to catch up. Lot a lot like WWE, you know. Yes. The when the live streaming is a thing thing to do, New Japan come up with New Japan in the world, you know. Right. Right. Much like WWE Network and other company followed, but not. As a, as big you know? right no no I, I I know exactly what you mean so um back back to all Japan right we're starting to get towards the the later part of the 2000s right and and, yeah. and by this point like 2007 Muto had actually gone back to New Japan he'd won the IWGP heavyweight title he'd won that the was triple the time crown New Japan and all Japan were working together see when business is bad you work together so it's a really hard thing business to you know two companies working friendly you know, then then it's really hard to watch those matches, you know, because they have to be rivals. Something you have to believe in. Right. You know, 2007 version of Muto against Tana, you know, Hiroshi Tanahashi is not big, I mean, not as big of a dream match as we would think. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. And, 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 and Muto goes over, like, top guys. He goes over Goto. He goes over uh, uh, Nakamura. Nakamura. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and New Japan was hurting too. You know, they were using, you know, the the giant Bernard, right? You know, Mud Bloom, right? Oh yeah. And and uh, their own American wrestlers, you know, in the in the, in their cluster, right? Not quite your WWE type superstar, you know. No. No, and, and so uh, all, all all Japan and New Japan, they they spend a couple of years working together, and it climaxes right around uh, 2012, right? Because they have their uh, the 40th anniversary, right? They do that special tour together, yep. right? And it's you know it's it's good stuff. 2012 is a big year, right? We get yeah, to 2012. Yeah. 2012 is about the time Muto and his Leave. partners, they, they, they well yeah. they decide to start. Uh, they're gonna sell out, right? They're gonna yeah. sell out to the the new owners, speed partners. Yeah. So so yeah, but the, we learned something though. There's all these, I mean, new people with new money, like a internet oriented business or right, just like your cyber so and so, you know, cyber fight, that, right? Uh, yeah, like a, they're a group, you know, like a corporate people with some money, right? You know, and then uh, they're rather young. It's not like old companies, but the, those are the people who made new money with new technology. You know, it's all ventures, you know, and they thought they could do something with wrestling, but they always have very little understanding of wrestling. Yeah. 2011, Akayama, he, he comes back to All Japan and he wins the Triple Crown, right? So a right. Noah he, wrestler. He and Shio, Shiozaki's guys, like a, Noah had a split, you know, like a six, seven guys quit, quit pro wrestling Noah. And joined old old school old Japan. And this is like so confusing. Right, 
Right. Yeah, the, by the, then, Misawa was gone. You know what I mean? Right. The, the burning group, right? The burning group winds up leaving uh, because uh, uh, Kobashi, he gets terminated by uh, 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 Noah management, right? The, the, the Noah management at that point in time, they, they said, no, we, we don't want to pay for Kobashi. And so Akiyama and his guys, they, they split and they wind up heading over to all Japan, but the year before that, Akiyama had won the Triple Crown, right, as a Noah guy. But now he comes back in 2012, and he realistically though, yeah. but there's so many places you can go, right? You know, Akiyama's, you know, five six guys wouldn't work for New Japan then, right? You know, yeah. So it's like you're going back to your like hometown or something, you know, and uh, yeah, really confusing because it didn't really create dream matches either. No. It's just like wrestlers had to do certain things. They make move, you know. Then uh, people are there to watch, but uh, they didn't really anticipate this, you know, Akiyama's big return to old Japan thing. It's like they did it was their reason or something, you know. Right. Not not because fans wanted to see it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and so <laughs> you know the the uh, the addition. Of the burning guys to the Muto era, right to the Muto crew, right. Mm -hmm. You you would have thought that it would have helped out things, and maybe it would have given time to develop it, right. But um, as soon, well, not as soon as, but shortly thereafter, after Akayama and his crew they integrate into All Japan, right, is mm -hmm. when Muto he decides that he he's going to leave because uh Shirashi so confusing yeah, yeah. Shirashi is, is he's the, yeah, the president new sponsor guy yeah yeah, yeah. And, and he kicks That's out the new guy I was talking about the yeah. typical guy new business internet business online business new money right and they have more money than they know what to do about and they thought they could buy wrestling right and so they, they they thought they knew wrestling and, and they kick out Uchida Right, the 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 president, right? Because Muto had stepped down as president, uh, uh, uh not uh, it was like a year or two before, um, mm -hmm. and so Shirashi kicks so, out so, Uchida. Mister Mister Uchida ended up going to pro wrestling Nor shortly after that, though. Right, right. A, cons a consultant. Right, yeah. and, and so everybody had to make money, right? Oh yeah, no, most so definitely. Not, the reason is theirs, not fans. Right. So so Muta winds up leaving in uh, mid-2013, right? And then about two weeks later is when he decides he's going to make uh, Wrestle 1, the, the, the more modern Second Wrestle version. 1. Yes. Yeah, right. and, and, he, and he takes almost the entire crew of well, All he Japan. He wanted to just leave, but the other guys came with him. Right. Just like Pro Wrestling Noors. See, when Misawa initially opened Pro Wrestling Noor, it was going to be just three to five guys of his own right you know but the entire old japan wrestlers you know ended up leaving with him right it was same same situation with muto leaving old japan you know he probably wanted to do is just him and a couple other guys right you know then and, and then wanted the old japan stay the same you know just leave it you know just do what you have to do you know run the old japan but i'm leaving right, right. but uh Eight, nine guys came with All Japan. I mean, with, with Muto. And M Muto wasn't really expecting it. Right. You know? He wasn't about to start another wrestling, you know, I mean, like money losing wrestling company, you know? Right. At, at the end of All Japan era, he was spending his own money, you know, his own saving to, to save the company, you know? To save All Japan. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's like you have King, you know? But you always have their soldiers, you know. Yeah, that the, most of the guys can't make their own move, you know. If Muto goes to some place, I'll go with him, kind of thing. Right. Yeah. And so, Leaders and follower kind of thing. Yeah. No. I and and, <clears throat> and uh, you know um, we I, I want to take a, a quick step back to right like a couple years before this happened. So uh, Muto had won every single title. In, in all Japan's existence by that point. Right, uh, right. And, and then he decides he's going to go after Kaz Hayashi's junior heavyweight title, right? And so they do it a big a build up. Title, yeah, no, it, it was it was like a, a novelty thing, right? Mm -hmm. And it was a big build up. And, you know, uh, Muto, 
uh, you know, and and Kaz, you know, they had gotten fairly well, close to this Kaz point. Single match means something then. I remember seeing the match and it being fun, but you know, Muto loses at the end of it, and, and you know, you have to wonder. You just had Kaz, you know, beat arguably the biggest star of the promotion. Yeah, that means like it's so they they run through courses. Yeah. They didn't know they didn't have anything else to do probably. You no. Know? And they had to come up with something. Right. Know? And we should also mention that in in 2009, uh, Kojima, he is on his last year, right? Yeah, ended up going back to New Japan. He wound he up going up. back. Yeah, yeah, he wound up going back to New Japan. And, and the thing is, is that he initially came out and said, uh, "I I am I am injured and I might retire because he had a arm arm he had arm problems," and then yeah. he shows up in the the G1. Not too long after, as a freelancer, and then he wins it, and then he winds up winning the IWGP Heavyweight yeah, Title, right? Right. right? And, and the thing is, is everybody is like, "What the hell just happened?" Because he was literally in all Japan. He'd been in all Japan for like uh, seven years, almost eight years, yeah. and then just boom, just gone, right? But but the money, and, and and like you said, they they run through the cycle. You know, he he had gone through. Everything that he could do, he had been yeah, voodoo yeah. murders. He had been a heel. He had been face. He got he he. Uh, we we should we did should everything. did we, everything. Yeah, we we yeah. should we should mention that while he got his he he beat Kawada. He ended Kawada's. Uh, uh, he has the the most defenses, right? Kawada, did, right? Right. And, and so Kojima was the one that broke it, and he beat him in two thousand five, and then Kojima challenges Tenzon for the IWGP heavyweight title and yeah, then he the and IWGP if, title against triple crown title match never happened so yeah well i mean she wasn't the dark age of wrestling yeah he <laughs> he he inadvertently won it because if i if, and correct me if i'm wrong but uh Tenzon his his lumbar right his lower lumbar had, had completely locked up on him and so he didn't answer the 10 count because he, right. he would down, and so he was supposed to get up, and they did the 10 count, and Kojima wound up winning the title, and it was totally yeah. by accident, and then Kojima defends it one time against uh, Nakamura. Before, Nakamura. Yeah, before Another he, Tokyo Dome show. Yeah, before... 60-minute time limit. Yeah, yeah, and he winds up dropping it back to Tenzon, like, after he's, you know, healed up. Um, yeah, yeah. But that was just insane, you know. I remember watching that and being like, Tenzon's going to get up, right? And then he didn't, and I was like, oh, my God, what what just happened, you know? And it but didn't... it was a New Japan match, though, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, so, and, and it doesn't make All Japan it, it stronger. It almost never mattered how many years Kojima spent, you know, time with All Japan. He always looked like a New Japan wrestler. Right. Yeah, and he worked like a New Japan wrestler. He did. You know? Yeah, he yeah. he did, and, and and you know that's the the sad part is is that as much as you know I, I enjoyed seeing him in All Japan, and I was happy that he had joined All Japan. He he wrestled his style like a, like New Japan, right? Yeah, you, you see yeah. his matches, so, well, you know. So so there was like a New Japan, New Japan, and All Japan looking like a New Japan wrestling. Hashimoto Zero One is a different company, but what you see is like exactly New Japan type wrestling. And yeah, yeah. I mean, there's like a and uh, Ricky Choshu's short-lived Double J World Japan Wrestling. Right. That's completely New Japan style. Right. In, in ring, in ring product. So it's like there was like a four or five New Japans, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, and then the funny thing about w World Japan too is is um, all the guys that that were coming up that were either mid carters or they were trainees, they wound up in New Japan, like Ishii, Uwano. They wound up yeah. working in New Japan eventually, right? So that's right, the, that's right, the, the right. crazy part, you know. But they were all talented individual, you know. Yeah, no, no, no. A yeah, talented individual, younger wrestler, you know, should find a place to work. Yes, um, especially people like Ishii, you know. Yeah, I was just about to get into that with Ishii. I want to tell a yeah, quick. Yeah, Tomohiro Ishii was carrying Ricky Choshu's bag. Yeah. yeah. And was trained by Tenru in the WAR era. Right. And when the company was down, he was working Michinoku. You right, know, junior heavyweight. Yeah. Right, and, and but, he worked uh, in uh, uh, Toriumon too. Very short time, but he ah, did Toriumon. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. 
Well, same size guys, I guess. Right. Tony Mo guys are relatively all small, you know? Yes. So, and he was still yeah. a junior heavyweight at that point. He hadn't started bulking up yet. In a fight TV from Canada, they start carrying pro wrestling Noah with English commentary, right? Right. All of a sudden, everybody's talking about Keiji Muto, GHC champion, you know, pro wrestling Noah. You know, they didn't give, you know, give rats ass about it for 10 years. Right. And then now it's English commentary and, and, and it's people who are willing to watch. Right. Something. Right. Yeah. No, so I, it's I important. agree. Yeah, so it's important. I wish all Japan, maybe, um, maybe you might be able to create a connection that uh, your team doing, you know, English commentary on uh, all Japan footage, they may like it. Yeah, we, we, we're, we're trying. We, we're definitely trying. We're, we're reaching out to, to Jerry and a, a couple of other folks. There's some people... We can't mention names, but we we have people that are are rooting for us. That uh, that's good. That's are, good. You know, that's good. But because they need English commentary, because product and the quality of wrestling is there. Yes. You know. Yes. Suama, Kento Miyahara, Zeus. You know, they're all just as good as any New Japan stars. I agree. Yeah. So I agree. what they don't have is like a <laughs> promotion and a campaign and. A, you know your uh, merchandising and, and, and uh, all kinds of things lacking, right? Right. No, I, I totally agree, and I, I hope that at some point in time they're willing to uh, reconsider and, and to to go with what you're saying is that they they need to be able to reach out internationally, but but not not what, yeah, what we say half assed. Kento Miyahara can be a, a, a big as big a star as. He was Tanahashi or somebody. I, I agree. I, I, I'm yeah. with you 100%. I, I, yeah. I will tell you this right now, Fumi. I will tell you this right now from the bottom of my heart. I think all Japan can get that exposure. It can, yeah. get, it can get over with an uh, audience from Mexico, from Argentina, Brazil, sure. Lithuania, Japan, <laughs> Korea, yeah. Africa, Malaysia, uh, uh Fresno, California. That's my hometown. Uh, uh, yeah. it, it can get over anywhere. They just need to put the effort into it and reach out with right. both arms and say, "Hey, world, oh, let, let's let's we're hope all it will happen." Yeah. I, I hope so. You know, and I hope yeah, that we I, can I be sure there to help. So. The finale of Keiji Muto. This is going to be his final run, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He when... he signed that two-year contract with yeah. Noah, right? Let's yes. let's let's talk about that. Why Why do you think he signed for a two-year contract? Why not just be a freelancer and just be the GHC uh, heavyweight champion? I, 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 yeah, I talked to somebody just yesterday, as a matter of fact, okay. that uh, Buto did not want to answer the phone calls to, from anybody. Right. He hates that, you know, when some independent promoter will call you and offer you, a, you know, sun, Sunday night, some independent show for, for how much money and... Uh, it's like if you are if Muto was signed under Pro Wrestling No exclusive contract that he doesn't have to answer to anybody. Somebody else would be taking a phone call or even a TV appearance like a, your quiz show, a game show, or your movie appearance right. or anything else outside wrestling. Right. He doesn't have to answer the phone calls. You know, Noah would be taking the phone calls. Right. Cyber Sports would be t- in managing it. And, and, he can just show up. You know. And and the money, right? Obviously, he's getting a good amount of money to, oh, yeah. to sign and that also, contract. It's a full-time contract with Pro Wrestling Norm. Yes, that, that makes total yeah. sense, right? Because he, yeah, he, so, his knees are shot. They're yeah, shot so Max, to hell. Yeah, so uh, so he, he's making healthy money per match now. Right. Yeah. It, 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 but I do think you're right. I do think it's it's his last run, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, more like a Ric Flair run. Right, right. One One last time around the block, right? And also, he will work so smart that he will create the matches that we haven't seen, you know? Because we've been watching wrestling so long that the uh, even WrestleMania moment, that the, I think we've seen this, right? Right. Yeah, but uh, Muto can still come up with things that we haven't seen. Right. He can come up with it. Yeah, I believe that. Well, they don't call him the pro wrestling genius for nothing, right? <laughs> right. And also, he's been he's had bad knees for 20 years. You know, yeah. he always worked around it, you know. And also, when the time is right, he introduces a new finish. If you remember, Moonsault was the only finish. And then he had a leg sweep, dragon screw into your figure four. Right. Then he created 
in your shining wizard right you know or short drop kick you know right he can't fly that high so start throwing drop kick short you right. know and it's like he'll come up with something that people hasn't seen and how influential he is that day after he introduced the shining wizard rest of the world in independent shows guys were doing it right very next day yeah everybody so was doing kind, it yeah so he's that kind of wrestler you know very influential yeah, and then come up with something very original, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I don't. So I'm, I'm counting on it. Well, you know what? I I have to tell you, <laughs> every time we do these talks, uh, Fumi, I I, I get We're the biggest it. kick oh, out oh. of it. There's there's a lot of folks that don't that are not educated on all Japan from you know soup to nuts, as we like to say, and and, <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah. um, you know that's that's half of the reason why. All Japan Worldwide fan group exists is because people they they get tuned in on it and they say now I want to know more. What happened before Suama? What happened before Kento? And then they go right, and say right. what happened before Kojima? What happened before Muto? What happened before Kaz Hayashi? And then they go back even further. They so say much to go back. Yeah, yeah. What, what happened before Masawa and, and and Ogawa and Keia and Kawada? And then they go what happened All before? All the way back to Tenru and Jumbo. <laughs> but both, but even you know, uh, uh, at some point in time, I think I would like to talk to you about before. Like, I, I seriously want to have a great discussion about the first ten years of All Japan, like seventy-two sure, to sure. eighty-two, just because oh, yeah. there's so much that people don't know about. They don't know about the fact that Bruno was was a, a WWF guy, WWF guy. He was a Vince Senior guy, and he only wanted to work for Baba, but everybody else in the WWF, yeah, they, yeah. They, they were working with New Japan, right? And then you got right, the, the right. Briscoes. You have this NWA connection that All Japan. They used it. They they squeezed all the juice out of that turnip, and they said, sure. we want to get all that we can out of being an NWA member, right? Yeah. And, and there's so much that people don't know about that, but I want to help them know about that. Yeah, and then you probably have a better idea of today's product because of it. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. do. I, yeah. I'm a very curious type, and that's how it's kind of got me here Got me with All Japan Worldwide Fan Group. Got me to talk with you and lots of other folks, you know, yeah, wrestlers yeah. from the past. Oh, let's do you know. it again oh, uh, to, for this group to grow, you know. Yes. We, we can make this a regular thing. Sounds fantastic, Fumi. I, I'm yeah. so, so appreciative of you and your time and your expertise. And, and also, I'm looking forward to it. Not not so much is written in about Japanese wrestling in English, you know. Yeah. That's what we're here for, you know. Yeah, so we can uh, talk about it, and then we have a radio show like this. Yeah. And people can listen to it and have their own idea of what it is, you know. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, I, I love the way you think. I really do. <laughs> oh, the old Triple Crown, International Heavyweight Title, PWF Title, UN Title, all came from Amer America originally. Yes, they did. Yes, yeah. they did. And, and that's what people kind of fail to realize is how much... International Tag Team... Or the the whole creation process of IWGP was anti NWA, you know? right? Yeah, so we should learn about that. Yeah, yeah I, I totally agree. A, a lot of a lot of fans uh, now, modern fans, right? They don't understand how integral America is to Japanese pro wrestling. Without America, there is no Japanese pro wrestling. Rikido-san needed Rikido somebody yeah. to basically be the bad guy, and, and so guess who that was? That was the Americans. <laughs> you yeah, know? but then again, that the Japanese wrestling business was a you know the me mega media event. You know, from right from the get go. You know, right. always had network channels, always had network channels budget, and always had the prime time programming. Right. And uh, yeah, yeah, so it was a big business. You know, so, huge, huge, right? Yeah, yeah. So different kind of evolution. Yeah. Right, uh, 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 some of the the biggest uh, TV fans, ratings. TV yeah. ratings is, is is early Japanese pro wrestling, right? Huge, yeah. right? Rikido-san, Rikido-san against Ruth S. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and or even today's record, you know, record book, the Rikido-san, Rikido-san against Dick Pyre Destroyer match, single match from 1963, right? Still ranking today's TV ratings like a second place, right? And that's huge. Yeah, because the rating was like a 68% or something. 
<laughs> you know? That's amazing. Yeah, no Olympic Games or no World Cup soccer can beat that. You know? Right. And, 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 and what you said one half of that was the destroyer, Dick Bayer, an American. Oh, huge. Huge. Yeah. We have to talk about Dick Bayer sometime too because he was the very first American who came here and lived here for seven years. Right. We, we brought... Oh, brought his whole family over. He, his kids graduated from a Japanese high school. Oh wow! I didn't actually know that. Yeah, they they speak perfect Japanese and write and read. Wow. You know, so they changed their lives too. You know. Um, I, I I'm pretty sure you you're familiar with uh Roy Roy Lucier. You, do you know Roy? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so uh, we talked with Roy about the destroyer when he had passed on. Right. And, yeah. and, and we, yeah. we, we talked a bit about him, but I would love to go back and revisit because he is a huge piece of the puzzle when we're talking about early all Japan. Right. He's and just as big as the wrestler, funks. wrestler being mainstream celebrity. Yes, because he was on and big time Dick, variety shows. Right. Right. Every Friday night as a comedian. Oh, my gosh. Wow. He was huge. Yeah. But he was putting on figure for leg lock to uh, other celebrities. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um. So I mean, th there's so much to talk about, and we're definitely going to do our best to get this out to the masses. Yeah, they don't. They don't have a time because you know we'll accumulate. You know, then we'll have better understanding of, of big pictures. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. That uh, you can find me on Twitter, Fumihiko Dayo, F U M I H I K O D A Y O, Fumihiko Dayo on Twitter, or you can just find me Fumi Saito on Facebook. Yes, and, and we want to make sure that you are subscribed to the YouTube channel. You find us on YouTube channel is a, a All Japan Worldwide fan group. We want to make sure that you're checking us out on the Facebook group. You just go to the Facebook.com forward slash All Japan Worldwide fan group. We want to make sure that you find us on Twitter as well as AJPW Worldwide. We are All Japan Worldwide fan group. We are uh, out of time on this interview, and we had a fantastic time. Fumi Saito, again, thank you so much. We are out of oh, here. Yeah, thank you. We will, we will do this again sometime, and yeah, we have yeah, lots and lots of interviews. We have, uh, if you check up on our YouTube channel, we have English commentaries. We have interviews. We have Suwama Station podcast, which is this is going to be a part of. And so mm -hmm. thank you so much for subscribing and listening and being a part of All Japan Worldwide Fan Group or just in general being a, a fan of All Japan. Or if you want to be more specific, thank you for making the time and effort to enjoy Japanese pro wrestling because as, as our friend Fumi has pointed out, uh, Americans or just Westerners in general, they, they don't watch foreign movies, right? So it, really it, 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 it takes some effort to get past certain things that you you may have you know to get into japanese pro wrestling but you know it's the good stuff and, and you know and also wrestling I, fans are open to it yeah right? exactly yeah. wrestling fans yeah. that are open to it thank you for opening up to it because without you this whole thing doesn't go off so you know what my salute to you my blue justice my salute <laughs> to you and this is dave the drummer saying blue justice talk to you all later take care take care Hey folks, how's it going? We just wanted to let you know that we have put some additional content into this episode. And so while we're going to give it to you the way we originally had intended, at the very end of the episode, we're actually going to hit you with some really big news and updates that had happened towards the later part of May. We didn't have a chance to upload everything, uh, the episode of the podcast, to our Spotify and to our YouTube channel. So we figured we'd do a little extra and we put in some of that news that happened in May, the end of May, including a really, really big, interesting matchup that they did not publicize. They did not talk about all Japan kind of just sprung it out of nowhere. It was uh, first hinted at in the weekly pro wrestling and magazine. So as we mentioned at the very beginning of the show, some big events took place 
and I'm here to talk about those in pretty solid length. So <clears throat> due to the lockdown order, the Oda War Gym Champions Night Show was forced to be rescheduled. It was originally supposed to be on May 15, uh, May 16th, my apologies. And they decided instead to push it out a bit longer. So they are going to have Champions Night on the 26th of June. Still at Currican Hall, they had a date for the Dynamite Series on 6.30. That'd be June 30th at Currican Hall. They canceled that one just so that they didn't... Uh, you know, have to run uh, Cork and Hall a little thin over the next few days. They they generally try to uh, be a little smart about their resources, and so having a really big Cork and Hall show and a smaller show four days later may not have been the most uh, effective idea. But nonetheless, 626 is when we are going to have the Champions Night. And because of that reshuffling of the cards, some things wound up trickling down later into the uh or trickling into the dynamite series so instead of having all these championship matches on one night on the 26th all the title matches were kind of spread out across the dynamite series but before we get to that we want to mention that siyoshi kikuchi who is famously one of the most well-known all Japan junior heavyweights in that early 90s era teaming with, you know, uh, Kobashi teaming with Misawa teaming with, you know, all the the pillars of the four heavenly kings. Kikuchi is a standout junior heavyweight wrestler who saw his I would say his twilight start to enter around the early 2000s and while he had been wrestling kind of often on the last few years this match that was held at Pro Wrestling Bar Gold, the 15th anniversary, is sort of seen at his, as his final match. He lost to Koji Katemoto at 6.25. Kikuchi himself is a former junior heavyweight champion, is definitely one of the most highly regarded junior heavyweight wrestlers in all Japan history. Kikuchi having some stand-up matches with Ogawa, with Fuchi, with the Can-Am Express. I mean, he's also a all-Asian tag team champion. And Kikuchi, if, the, if he is hanging it up, I would definitely say that he's had one hell of a career. He had a brief resurgence in the early 2000s teaming with Yoshinobu Kanemaru. They would win the IWGP Junior Heavyweight tag team championship and lose it back over to I believe Kanemoto and Liger and I tell you what Kukuchi versus the New Japan Juniors is a lot of fun to watch but Kukuchi himself has been one of the most standout junior heavyweights that have come from the All Japan Dojo if you ever get a chance be sure to check out some of his really killer stuff from the early 90s all the way up to the Exodus the Noah Exodus so we just wanted to make mention to that and say congratulations to Kikuchi. Moving on to the next piece of uh, news. Uh, the Summer Action Series was announced on the 13th of this month of May as we are recording. And we want to give the dates and the locations of all five of those dates for the Summer Action Series. We've got Adeon Arena Osaka on the 11th. Shinkaiba Ring 1 on the 13th. These are of July, mind you. Yokohama City Hodogaya Public Hall on the 15th of July. Narita View Hotel on July 18th. And finishing out that the tour ending show will be at Kurikan Hall on the 22nd of that month. So, we were talking about a big, interesting matchup that nobody saw coming that was not advertised. So... Roughly about two and a half weeks ago, we had seen some people posting up on certain Facebook groups that uh, some of you, the listeners, are also a part of as well, not just All Japan Worldwide Fan Group. And we saw pictures of Minoru Suzuki face-to-face -face facing off against the supernova of All Japan, Kento. 
And so people were asking questions like, what is the deal with this? What is going on? And I initially had asked some of our friends, Fumi Saito being one of them, uh, about what the deal was with that. And Fumi had not heard anything about this. And we had initially kind of believed that maybe these were photoshopped pictures. You know, some people kind of got, you know, very creative and uh, just wanting to see that and making it look legitimate. You know, it's really hard to say. But lo and behold, uh, Weekly Pro Wrestling had the, the ad, the advert for All Japan having Kento Miyahara going up against Minoru Suzuki face to face right you know in the middle of the weekly pro wrestling magazine and so it's a very reliable source uh it's been the premier wrestling magazine but frankly the only real wrestling magazine in japan for some time now and we found out a few days later after the magazine had come out that amazon prime video japan was having another all japan special with a killer lineup uh, like they did earlier, I'm sorry, like they did back in December with uh, teasing the Naoya Ogawa uh, exchange, right? Possibly teasing him coming out and then having the very, very last appearance of Hideki Suzuki in All Japan right before he took off to go work in the WWE now. And we just, we were blown away that PKDX, who was a very, very reliable source of news on Twitter, had nothing on this. Nobody had anything on this. All Japan had nothing on this. Minota Suzuki didn't have anything on this. Kento, nobody, nobody was posting anything about this. And this is a huge, huge event, uh, having Minota Suzuki, a former Triple Crown champion, definitely somebody who is a connection to All Japan's recent past, uh, going up against Kento, who is the the future. He is the the icon of all Japan pro wrestling in the present. And so we just found this to be very confusing, <laughs> very very tricky to uh, find any kind of information about this. But we managed to find the card out, and we have definitely had people in the group. Uh, Mr. Nick, being one of them out there, was trying to get this, uh, trying to get. Amazon Prime Video to work with VPNs, but uh, not having any luck. Hopefully, somebody finds a workaround to watch that uh, over here or just outside of Japan. But I'm going to go through that card real quick. I did not get the uh, arena uh, location of where the show was held at, but I do have the card for you right here. I do want to give a shout out to the source, though, because it's somebody I'm just only recently getting acquainted with. Black Eye pw.com yes it's a japanese site that had this information and i want to give a shout out to them because i certainly didn't find this myself uh i mean i i did find his information but i would have not known the the card if not for him but let me run that down for you right now so koji iwamoto Fuminori Abe go up against Atsuki Aoyagi and Rising Hayato next stream. Takao Mori and Black Menzore and Carvel Ito, the TV six-man tag team champions going up against a combination of Shuji Ishikawa, the Gaara TV champion, Kohei Sato, his tag partner in the Twin Towers, and Francesco Akira, who, have been, who has been tagging with Shuji Ishikawa kind of here and there, making a, uh, a team that he has been very much excited about uh, our friend Akira. Hey, man. <laughs> Yoshitatsu and Chikara and Leona go up against Purple Haze, Zeus Aizanagi, and joined by Masashi Takeda, who makes his return to All Japan after uh, being gone away a little bit of time. Jake Lee, Tajiri, Hokuto Amori, Total Eclipse. They go up against Dragon Gate's red unit combination of BB Hulk, Kazuma, Sakamoto, and Kai with Eita. Sounds like a fantastic match. I definitely would love to see that. Suwama and Shotaro Ashino kind of solidify their union, their tag team. They go up against two wrestlers that definitely have some real classics that they have produced over the last 20 years in all Japan. Kaz Hayashi and Taka Mishinoku. 
Taka, of course, representing Just Tap Out, the promotion he opened up after the split between him and K Dojo's. Uh, well, between him and K Dojo and Kaz Hayashi, who is now signed with Gleet. Definitely somebody who has been a, I would argue, one of the most legendary junior heavyweights that All Japan had come through it, its doors. And in the main event, Kanto going up and teaming with Yuma Aoyagi, his tag partner, World Tag Team, Double Cup Tag Team Champions. They teamed up with Shinjiro Otani of Wrestle One. They go up against the combination of Minoru Suzuki, Hikaru Sato, and Rambo Kawamura. Now, as we've mentioned before, Suzuki's relationship with Sato is that Suzuki basically helped train Sato and sort of is seen as a mentor by Sato as they both represented Pancre's mission over the years. And so that is how Minoru probably came about to coming back and even working this one show with All Japan. And, uh, of course, they've also done some work with hard-hit shows. Of course, Sato took on Suzuki at the end of last year. And uh, if, you're, if, you're, <laughs> if, you're, uh, if you've been paying attention, Sato usually wears gear from the Pile Driver store, which is owned by Minoru Suzuki. So, very interesting else to have note is that Kazuo Yamazaki, legendary New Japan figure Le legendary new japan wrestler uh was doing commentary for the show so i find that very interesting if it is the same kazuo yamazaki it may not be but this, you get the same name it does make you a little curious but that is what we managed to dig up about the information about the amazon prime japan video the all japan special show that was uh, teased in the advert for weekly pro wrestling so it took a little bit of work, but we've kind of figured out the the card, and it, it sounds like a real doozy. And with that Amazon Prime money behind them, I mean, I can only imagine what uh, could be happening on the next show for All Japan. So that's some pretty awesome stuff. Anyways, so All Japan, after the Champions Carnival, had two more shows, Yokohama Extra and Champions Night Shinkaiba Extra. So these went off with crowds, and we're going to give you the results of those right now. And on the 19th at Hodogaya Public Hall, we had Yoshitatsu get the win over Nick Stream's Rising Hayato with the crab hold at 7.54. Koji Iwamoto gets the win over Francesco Akita at 7.41 with the Koko no Gejetsu. Iwamoto, after this match officially announces he has no interest in the Junior Battle of Glory tournament because he is aiming squarely for SEMA and the Junior Heavyweight title. And because of the fact that Iwamoto did not get his shot at SEMA on the 16th due to the emergency lockdown order complicating the booking, Iwamoto is putting a lot of confidence into being able to beat SEMA for the junior heavyweight title on the next tour. In a skirmish to build up the six man the T V six man tag team championship, Tajiri and Okuto Amori of Total Eclipse get the win over Takao Mori and Black Menzode at four twenty two when Hokuto used the Muso Isen on Black Menzode to get the win for his team. And a another match to build up the title match coming up for it the world tag team titles they had a uh, six-man tag Shuji Ishikawa Kohei Sato and Fuminori Abe they go up against Kento Yuma and Atsuki of next stream it is Ishikawa gets the win over Yuma at 1451 with the Splash Mountain to build momentum for their challenge the Twin Towers challenging next stream for the World Tag Team slash Double Cup Tag Team Championship. In a title match, the All-Asian Tag Team titles were defended by Zeus and Aizanaki of Purple Haze. They get the win over Hikaru Sato and Dan Tamura when Aizanagi used his inside cradle on Tamura to get the win. 
This team is on its 55th of the All-Asian Tag Team titles. They are still practically considered to be the most dominant tag team in All Japan right now. As I mentioned, Zeus with his power and his size and charisma, and Aizanagi with his craftiness and his ability to bend and flex with the opponents that come across them in their tag team title defenses. They are the winning combination right now. And so Aizanagi manages to avenge his loss to Tamura completely, especially after putting down the title challenge. After the match, it was announced that Aizanagi, by Aizanagi, excuse me, that Tamura, I'm sorry, it was announced that Purple Haze will have a new member joining in the Junior Battle of Glory representing Purple Hearts, and that wound up being Devil, Devil Murasaki. Now, Devil Murasaki is a mask gimmick that had existed in IWE as well as in All Japan for a couple of years in the 70s. So it's very interesting that they would revisit a classic Japanese Showa-era uh, mask gimmick, but I'm very interested to see what develops of this. I'm even more curious to see who's under the Devil Murasaki mask. And hopefully they do a really good job coming in and adding some spice into the junior heavyweight division in All Japan. And in the main event, Suwama, Shotaro Ishino, and Yuki Honda, they get the win over Jake Lee, Koji Doi, and Kuma Arashi when Honda used a German suplex on Honda at 18-19 for the win. This is a huge win for Honda. He gets his first win ever over Kuma Arashi. Now, Arashi and Honda are both products of the Wrestle One Dojo, so it's no surprise that Arashi would be the one to give Honda his first victory. But I just have to say, I'm just very surprised it kind of came out of left field. I thought maybe they'd square off a few more times before pulling the trigger, but Honda gets the win here, and that definitely speaks volumes for the future of Mr. Duki Honda. Moving on to the next show in May, which is on the 21st, Champions Night 2021 Shinkaiba Extra is at Shinkaiba First Ring. Takao Mori, Koji Iwamoto, Black Menzode get the win over Yoshitatsu, Fran Francesco Akira, and the returning Balian Aki when Koji Iwamoto would use the Koko no Gejetsu on Akira at 8.17 for the win. Zeus and Shigehiro EDA of Purple Haze, they get the win over Yuma Aoyagi and Natsuki Aoyagi when Zeus used that mean-looking face lock at 8.43 on Atsuki for the win. And another match to build up the challenge of the World Tag Team titles coming up. Shuji Ishikawa and Yuko Miyamoto, they get the win over Kento Miyahara and Rising Hayato when Miyamoto used the moonsault press on Hayato for the win at 12.54. After the match backstage, Miyamoto, Miyamoto asked for a title shot at the Gaara TV title held by Shuji Ishikawa. I believe Ishikawa is going to give him that title shot down the road. That'll be a very interesting match to see, as I don't think they've had any kind of real interactions uh, besides the possibly uh, having some face-offs in BJW a couple years back. I could be wrong, but uh, I do believe that's where they would have spent the most amount of time around each other when Shuji Ishikawa was hanging out in BJW for a fair amount of time, making that sort of his uh, unofficial home base. Aizanagi celebrates his 20th anniversary in a special match going up against former Osaka Pro Wrestling great although he is just great in general, Kushinobu Kamen. Aizanagi gets the win via pinfall at 739. Now, for those of you who are not uh, aware, you're not uh, savvy to Aizanagi's, the, the man behind the mask, Aizanagi, right, Mariyama from Osaka Pro Wrestling, formerly Tiger's Mask. And Tiger's Mask was one of the more iconic Osaka Pro Wrestling stars they had 
period, hands down. Just one of the best guys they had. And he and Common go way back to the early 2000s when they were both regulars in Osaka Pro Wrestling. So this was a great way for Aizanagi to celebrate his wrestling career by getting to wrestle an old buddy from back in the day. In the semifinal, we had Koji Doi and Kuma Arashi of Total Eclipse. They get the win over Shotaro Ashino and Yuki Honda at 16.37 when Arashi used a diving senton on Honda to get the win. Arashi getting his win back. In the main event, we had for a build-up towards the Triple Crown heavyweight title match that is going to happen on June 26th. Jake Lee, Tajiri, and Hokuto Amori, they get the win over Evolution's Suwama, Hikaru Sato, and Dan Tamura at 15.34 when Lee used the D4C on Tamura at 15.43 for the win. During the show on the 21st, we had the announcement of the lineups of what was going to happen for the Junior Battle of Glory that is going to be hosted by Gaura Sports. Now, these are going to be tournament matches over the course of two days. This is including all the first round action, second Finals and final well, semifinal and finals to happen over the two days at Shin Kaiba. So we had mentioned earlier that uh, Devil Murasaki, who is now the newest member of Purple Haze, he will take on Pro Wrestling Basada's Fuminori Abe, who has been making a few more appearances in all Japan as of late than usual. It's really nice to see Abe around a bit more. Also in round one action, Hokuto Omori will go up against Hikaru Sato. Also in first round, Tajiri of Total Eclipse. He will go up against Francesco Akita, the young man, our friend from Italy, who has been in all Japan mixing it up. He just did his first match for uh, Pro Wrestling Gleet. And so congratulations to him on that, representing all Japan. Tamura is going, Dan Tamura is going to go up against Tatsuhito Takaiwa, very famous, very well known junior heavyweight star of the last I'd say the last 20 plus years in Japan uh, very hard hitting wrestler it's, I think uh, Dan Tamura has a mountain to climb in terms of challenge coming up in the first round of the junior battle of glory Black Menzode will go up against Yusuke Kodama also of Total Eclipse and we do want to mention Hokuto Amori is a member of Total Eclipse I just was trying to get through these lineups <laughs> Atsuki Aoyagi will go up against Sugi, formerly a Pro Wrestling 01. Atsuki, of course, representing Next Stream. Sugi last showed up in 2019 in multi-man tag action, and so it'll be interesting to see Sugi go in a singles match uh, here in his return to All Japan in a little under two years. Also in that first round, Aizanagi will go up against Brahmin K, who has not been in All Japan for some time, Brahmin K, of course, a member of the Brahmin Brothers who have been around the Japanese Indies for a very long time. Also, Ultimo Dragon students, if you can believe it or not. I mean, their their gimmick is very, very far beyond what most uh, Dragon Gate, Ultimo uh, Dragon Gym, Todiumon gimmicks are. But hey, they make it work for them. And finally, El Linda Man. Now representing Gleet, also representing Strong Hearts, he will go up against Rising Hayato of Next Stream. And so that is your day one of the Junior Battle of Glory. Now, day two, we'll see your second round semis and your finals all on two days. So it's just junior wrestling, just nonstop fantastic action we're looking forward to. The winners will go on to the final to decide who will get a shot at the junior heavyweight title after the SEMA Iwamoto matchup. Moving right along. So after the junior battle of glory, our June looks like something like this. We have the Dynamite series coming up on the beginning on the ninth at Kurikan Hall. Yoshitatsu will not be in action that day as he will still be in the U.S. on extended travel. His family is now based inside of the U.S., have been ever since he originally signed up to head over to NXT and was wrestling in the WWE. 
Zeus versus Honda will be the fifth match in Honda's seven-match trial series. Very much looking forward to that. There will be a three-way tag match with Aizanagi and Devil Murasaki. They will go up against Hayato and Aoyagi of Next Stream. And also, they will go up against Alejandro and Francesco Akita. Pretty interesting combination there on that last team, I say. So, on a six-man certified tag team championship match that is used to build up the tag title match coming up to Kaomori Black Minzore and X will go up against Tajiri Okuto Omori and Yusuke Kodama and another match used to build up a title match coming up Suwama Shotaro Ishino and Dan Tamura they will go up against Total Eclipse's Jake Lee Koji Doi and Kuma Arashi the Saito brothers will make their debut on the opener of the Dynamite series. That match was originally supposed to happen on May 16th, but got moved over to the opener of this, the Dynamite series. Yazufumi Nakanoe, who is the current strong world heavyweight champion over in BJW and a former All Japan trainee, he will team up with the man he just defended the belt against, a legend in all Japan, just like it says on this trunks, folks. Daisuke Sekimoto, they will go up against Jun Saito and Rei Saito, the Saito brothers who have been in the dojo for the past couple of months. It will be very interesting to see how well the new pair of wrestlers do against a couple of seasoned veterans like Nakanoe and Sekimoto. I'm looking forward to seeing how they do. The World Junior Heavyweight title will be defended. Sima, the 54th champion, will defend against Koji Iwamoto. It is Sima's third title defense. And so we are wondering, with abated breath, what will be the future of SEMA and possibly Gleek participation in All Japan if Iwamoto were to come away with the title on this match? Would SEMA and, by and large, Strongheart still come around All Japan, especially since they are now tied to the Gleet brand, the Gleet group that does wrestling events under the the, the Gleet label and also the Ledet UWF brand, which is now working with hard hit Hikado Sato's group that, uh, that I believe one of their shows had just happened and we did the results for it, talking about that earlier in the show. And to cap off the the night the main event will be the world tag team slash double cup tag team championships defended by next streams kento and yuma they will go up against the twin towers shuji ishikawa and kohei sato this will be the third defense for next stream it'll be a very tough challenge to go and topple the twin giants who have got some size on them not just height but girth as well and so i've i've you know i've I would uh, I would definitely venture a guess that's going to be a really, really, really true test of how well Miyahara and Aoyagi will function as a team, as teamwork will probably be the only thing that will keep them from losing those tag titles, is working together as a well-oiled machine. So moving along to the next night at Toyama, we have Koji Iwamoto, Black Menzode, and Hikaru Sato in a three-way in the opener. We have Shuji Ishikawa and the returning Yoshitatsu in a tag match going up against the Saito Twins. Takawamori and Carbo Ito will go up against Ryuki Honda and Francesco Akira. Yuma and Atsuki Aoyagi, the Aoyagi brothers representing Next Stream, will go up against Purple Hazes, Zeus, and Aizanagi. Kento and Rising Hayato, also representing Next Stream, will go up against Tajiri and Kuma Arashi of... Total Eclipse, and in the main event, Suwama, Shotaro Shino, and Dan Tamura will go up against Jake Lee, Okoto Amori, and Koji Doi, representing their armies respectively. Suwama, Evolution, Shotaro, of course, is an affiliate of Evolution now, but not a member, and Jake Lee, of course, leading Total Eclipse. We move on to the 21st Nagano Kisei Culture Hall will also have a Shin, Shin Shu Pro Wrestling match offer match on that show. 
to start things off. We will see Purple Hazes, Zeus, and Aizanagi go up against the Saito Twins. Yoshitatsu will go against Next Stream's Rising Hayato. Shuji Ishikawa and Francesco Akira will go up against Koji Iwamoto and Ryuki Honda. Takao Mori and Black Menzore will go up against Hikaru Sato and Dan Tamura of Evolution. Kento, Yuma, Atsuki of Next Stream will go up against Tajiri, Koji Doi, and Kuma Arashi of Total Eclipse. And we will have Suwama and Shotaro Ishino go up against Jake Lee and Okutu Omori in the main event. On the 26th, we have four matches declared so far. We have, of course, the Triple Crown Heavyweight title match between Suwama, the 63rd champion, in his eighth defense of his Triple Crown Heavyweight title reign, going up against the winner of the Champions Carnival, Jake Lee. This is a huge match. It could change everything about the landscape of all Japan. We have the Jumbo Suited to the Memorial match that is going to occur on the 26th. Originally, again, was scheduled for the 16th of May, which will see Fuchi, Shiro Koshinaka, Masahiko Takasugi, and Yuji Hishikata go up against Great Kojika, uh, Shinichi Nakano, Ozamu Nishimura, and Chikara. And again, we are very much excited to see Shiro Koshinaka make a return back to all Japan. Definitely still fun to watch. But Takasugi, of course, having been away for a very, very long time, uh, it's very nice to see him come back and pay respect to Jumbo Suruta. TV six-man tag team title match. We will see Takao Mori, Black Menzore, Carbell Ito, the first champions in their second title defense. They will defend against Tajiri, Hokuto Amori, Yusuke Kodama of Total Eclipse. And finally, we have ourselves a Road to Royal Road Strong Style match. The third match in the Fighting Battle Series. Yoshitatsu will go up against very famous Yosuke Nishijima. He's a kickboxer. Very famous in Japan. Very well loved. We're hoping this will be a bit more exciting than the last two of the match matches in the Road to Royal Road Strong Style series. So, very last thing to note, which is a very unfortunate thing to hear, and we're really hoping that she'll get better soon enough. PKDX on the 31st reported that famous referee Nikan Lee, who has been a huge, huge help to all Japan uh, over the time that she has been with them, uh, she has contracted COVID-19 and so she is being treated for it, and the promotion will definitely be missing her as she recovers and gets well enough to be able to get back to work, which we're sure that she loves because Nikan Lee is always posting about All Japan, always posting about pro wrestling. She is a gym, class act. We love her, and we hope that she gets back to healthy in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, All Japan has done a very, very commendable job of keeping their wrestlers relative, wrestlers and crew relatively safe from the threat of COVID. This is only the second wrestler, second, uh, uh, excuse me, the second All Japan, uh, we'll say All Japan staff member. I mean, we consider Zeus a staff, but well, let, let's just say, Nikan Lee is the second All Japan associated person that has gotten COVID-19, whereas Noah has had a, a number of them just recently, as well as New Japan as well. And so All Japan should be commended for doing such a great job. And we hope that Nikan Lee bounces back just like Zeus did not too long ago as well. That covers us for the entire month of May, as well as all the big news that has come up. Like I said, the thing with Kento, the thing with Nikan Lee, the structure already laid out in place for the Junior Battle of Glory tournament. All the big news, all the big events just got laid out, and we wanted to give that to you folks so that when we come to you next episode for June's events, we're just right on top of it. 
And so we want to thank you so much for joining us. Again, for All Japan Worldwide Fan Group's Suama Station podcast. Because we love talking about All Japan. We hope you love talking about All Japan too and listening about it. Folks, thank you so much for joining us on this big, ginormous two-part episode of Suama Station podcast. Myself and Matt would love to thank you for subscribing for tuning in, for being, uh, staying with us and following along with the podcast. I mean, we've been doing this for just about a year in terms of being on YouTube. We're really excited to have all sorts of killer guests and we are excited to bring to you what's happening with the All Japan Modern uh, product. And we will continue to do so as long as you are out there, you're listening, you're supporting us. Tell people about it. We do this by and large to help out the All Japan English, English speaking community. And we love All Japan and we will continue to keep pushing out All, All Japan news and updates to the masses. We want to make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. That is where we post our episodes up first and foremost. Make sure that you are subscribed. Make sure that you are not only subscribing, but if you like what you're hearing, please feel free to leave comments, positive ones, or maybe even, you know, if you got some uh, critiquing, you know, we're more than happy to listen to what you've got to say. And, of course, we are more than happy to bring you this goodness as long as that support is there and the community the fan base is there to be with us so that we can help bring all japan to the masses in terms of you know folks that are sort of on the fence or are not familiar with all japan this podcast and hopefully the english commentary was is will be doing a great job of helping bring those folks around to seeing how awesome all japan is so next month we have another killer episode we've got some more killer interviews you got to stay tuned you got to make sure that you're following us on the facebook group as all japan worldwide fan group you can also find us on twitter as well we are also on uh, spotify via the chair shot radio network and so you want to be sure that you're following us there new episodes are being uploaded as we speak we know we've been a kind of a bit behind on that but we are definitely looking to get back on top of that but until next time this is for matt and dave saying blue justice take care guys